go. Four on one discussion, 17,000 views, not bad. Freedom, fascism, truth, anecdotes, Star Wars, and other stuff. So I thought this would be really, really, really fun to react to. What do you all think? Sounds fucking good, yeah? Because uh, after this, we're gonna jump head first into, uh, into some discussions about Christianity. But I miss, I miss reacting to debates. I miss the, the fun that comes from analyzing people's arguments, making fun of them, uh, agreeing with them, all of that. So I think we should have a little bit of a good time. Let's, uh, let's, let's make this happen, huh? Let's fucking make this happen. Oh, wait, it is a little weird, isn't it? It's a little weird that I look this, maybe I should put this, oh no, ah! that's not correct. There we go, that was not correct. Hold on, ah, ah. that was messed up. That was fucking messed up. Here we go, now, now it's not messed up. Here we go. Maybe I should put myself over here and then that way I'm like looking at the chat at the same time. Yeah, this works. All right, let's fucking do it. Here we go, everybody. So for today's video, I'd just like to post a discussion that I had last night on the Sitch and Adam show. It ended up being kind of a four on one sort of discussion uh, where it was me on one side and then the other side, it was uh, Adam and Sitch and uh, actual justice warrior and Mahler. Um, so I feel like all things considered, I did pretty well for it being a four on one environment. There was definitely a few things looking back where I'm like, mm, I probably shouldn't have gone down that tangent. I probably shouldn't have made that argument. Um, but I try not to be too past oriented or past minded. The main thing that I regret is that at one point I do uh, get into anecdotal sort of evidence um, because I was asked about why I believe a certain thing and I gave an anecdote. And For those of you who don't know, this is TJ also known as the Amazing Atheist. Uh, uh, for those of you, uh, oh wait, I already said that. Uh, we had a conversation a few months ago that was fucking fantastic, actually. Um, it is on my channel. If you search Demon Mama, the Amazing Atheist, you will very easily find our discussion on YouTube. I highly recommend watching it after this stream. Uh, me and TJ's conversation was really good. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed it. We got to talk about things from some pretty, we have some pretty different perspectives on things, but we also align on a lot of things. He's very, um, he's very libertarian. I am also uh, libertarian in the, not in the American sense of the word, but in the sort of philosophical sense of the word. Um, and it was a good conversation. Uh, TJ is, is like a, a great, he's like an ent. He's been around on YouTube forever. He was one of the atheists of the like atheism skeptics era of YouTube. He was like the original one. Like he was like one of the first people doing that stuff. And he still makes content to this day. Uh, real quick, just so you guys know what his content looks like these days. Um, hold on, let me just show you. I'll give you an idea. Uh, let me just, here, um, I think it's on this channel. Was it this one that, he, that it's from this video? Let me see. Oh, maybe it's from his other channels. Yeah, I think it's from his other one. Hold on, let me see. Um, no, it's not this one. Wait, it was in my history. Hold on, where'd it go? Where'd my video go? This is silly. Yeah, uh, pro streamer moment. Can't find the video that I just watched like a little bit ago uh, to show you all before we watch this one. Eh, here we go. Yeah, here we Speak. go. For the form of dreams, because I gotta each say, person I appreciate, they are shaped differently, right? and to many, they cannot see the exact shape because they're too close or they're too far. Either proximity can blind, and a pyramid is only a triangle if you cannot see the depths of it. So yeah, so uh, you know, he's he does a lot. He does some different content these days. Um, but, uh, I think it's pretty interesting. I think it's super creative. I love his staff. I love his makeup. Uh, I love the theatricality of it. I think it's super creative and awesome, but he also does some conversations like this. He used to do way more, uh, like I would say react Andy stuff. He would react to stuff. He would talk about things. He would share his thoughts on religion, but that's ancient history. Now, now he's got a whole thing going on and it's really interesting. So old, old school YouTuber who's still doing some based shit. So, yeah. 
A lot of people like him. A lot of people in my audience like TJ, and I think a lot of people in TJ's audience like me as well. Um, I didn't expect us to get along quite as well as we did, but we actually got along really well and have since. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate uh, TJ's, uh, TJ's stuff, and I'm really interested to see how this debate goes. But I just figured I'd give you guys some background for those of you who aren't, uh, for the uninitiated. And I feel like I probably should have just refrained from that because, you know, your personal experience is very convincing to you, but it's never very convincing to someone else because anybody can can pull up an anecdote. They're very that hard. That much is true. As Nuts and as Nuts says, TJ was bashing st people like Steven Crowder over a decade ago. It is true. TJ has always made a lot of fun of fucking stupid conservatives. So, yeah. Hard to What's funny too is that even though I was really into atheism, Back in the day, I didn't actually watch very much t of TJ's stuff from back in the day. Um, w when I was into, like, the atheism stuff, I watched um, Zinnia Jones, um, ZJ, uh, and Matt Dillahunty, um, and, and stuff like that. I didn't really watch all that much of TJ's stuff, but I've come to appreciate his stuff recently, which is cool. Verify. And hey, they're very easy King. to fabricate. So um, I'm going to try to avoid any sort of anecdotal stuff in the future, especially when I'm t trying to convince people of something. But other than that, I feel like I did pretty reasonably well. But you guys can let me know what your critiques of my performance would be uh, down below. I don't want to become one of these debate bro kind of people. And really, I tried to prevent it from being too much of a debate and more of a discussion. Uh, but of course, it, it's, it was a contentious discussion. And uh, I don't know, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope Adam and Sitch don't mind me posting it. I figure since I was a participant, I'm free to use it as I wish. If they don't want me to, then uh, <laughs> I don't know, sue me, I guess. But uh, here it is, check it out. Zoom is the Fucking best. spaghetti, man. Hey What's now. Up? What's up? What? Okay, everyone, I take it back. It's a maximalism stream after all. Holy shit, what is this? What the hell is this? How? How is this fucking... What the fuck is this shit? Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Is this what their show always looks like? Hold on. I have to... I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, hold on a second. The nation of Sri Lanka has an... Oh my god, it always looks like this. How long have they been streaming? They have 41,000 subscribers? Bruh. Wait a second, hold on a second. Am I misremembering? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. What? Yes, I was remembering correctly. These guys have like 15 videos on me. One, they have, here's one, two, three, four, five videos with my name, six, seven. Seven, they have seven videos on me. Holy shit. Okay, I, I couldn't remember if this was the channel I was thinking of. Okay, yeah, all right. So I'm already living in their walls, but this is um, this is, this is unworkable. We gotta fix this. Hold on. We 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 need to. This is not like this is so ugly. I can't even read chat. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. It's time to bring in the big giant mama mauled. Hell yeah. Demon Mama doesn't want friends, only allies. What? Oh, wait, was that the title of one of their videos? Yeah, uh, people have a, it's wild. So one of the things I've realized um, about being me on the internet is that people have a completely fictionalized version of me in their heads. Um, and they see me as like um, somebody who's like, like I burn every bridge every five minutes, but it's really funny because actually I've, burn basically no bridges in the course of two years at uh, two and a half years the only bridges that i can even think of having burned uh was with like was with hans and then maybe 
you could argue no comment chick, that tiny streamer um, who recently I think has gotten involved in like a legal dispute, like two legal disputes. I think those are like the only people. Mel and I just fell out over time. It wasn't like a bridge burn. We just stopped being friends over time uh, for a number of reasons. I don't know. They have a very weird, uh, they have a, a, a fucking very weird way of looking at things. Also, Mel is like ridiculously toxic online. So I guess maybe I should, I don't know. I don't feel that bad about like, quote unquote, burning that bridge. Oh, RGR. Yeah, I guess that, I guess that is true. Oh wait, this is too big. Hold on. I gotta shrink this down a little bit. Yeah, I guess I guess people could say the RGR thing. Sorry, I'm adjusting this a little bit. I want to make it so that we can see our chat without uh having any like issues. Yeah, I don't know. Does the does it chart choose uh, did I burn the bridge? I tried really hard to not burn that bridge. I tried like really hard to not burn that bridge. Why is this sizing all, did I really fuck it up that bad? I really did fuck it up. There we go. All right, that's better. I burned the LB bridge. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't think I burned that bridge. I tried really hard to not. I'm I'm still friends. Oh, I'm, I, I've, I've like, yeah, I'm friends with Vosh and Zan. I don't know. Eh, whatever, let's go. Wait, people think I burned a bridge with Vosh. Okay, literally only idiots, like literally only internet demented idiots who, who live in a fantasy of their own creation think that I burned the bridge with Vosh. Like Vosh and I had one conflict. Uh, like it was literally the stupidest conflict ever. And it was like, uh, and my response to it was, dude, I felt like that sucked. It made me mad, but that's it. And then it was done. I don't, people are stupid. I don't know. Fuck. Whatever. Let's listen to this goddamn debate. We fixed the issue. Look at this. It's a mess. Look, you got a maximalism stream. You got a logo here, a comic book background. You got fucking graphic design is my passion all over this place. Woo. All right, let's do it. Oh, spaghetti. Fucking spaghetti, bitch. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know uh, what that means. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> oh, I think, no, it's not I think he's mean. making spaghetti. Oh, you're eating oh, spaghetti. Oh, okay, yeah, nice. right now, right at this very second. Well, thanks for joining the stream, even though you're in the middle of your meal. Are you going to... Yeah. I mean, I can... Okay, okay. I got to do a, I gotta do something here. I got to be my, my catty self real quick, okay? All right. Mauler, boring icon. No face. If you don't show your face in a debate... That's coward shit, okay? I'm sorry, it just is. Not showing your face in a debate is fucking coward shit. Secondly, uh, this picture of actual Justice Warrior is perfectly accurate and uh, and uh, it still looks like shit. Why would you choose like your LinkedIn fucking job interview photo when you're going into like a debate on a channel like this? It's literally the most dweeby, like, what do you think? You're going to get a job as, like, a local, like, manager of, like, a fucking Burger King? Like, what the fuck? And then third, this guy, a, like, whatever, what appears to be, like, the anonymous guy with his pants down with a Microsoft Paint face drawn on it. And then some pseudo-psychedelic backdrop that's constantly distractingly cycling in the background. And then a guy who looks like a fucking weeaboo. The only person here with a competent background is fucking TJ. TJ is winning so far just on pure drip alone. The drip is carrying the, the conversation and nobody's even said any fucking words. Jesus. Okay, I just had to get that out of my system. I had to roast everybody's backdrop. Honestly, to be fair, at least Adam Friended looks like he's trying. Like this guy over here, he's actually like, there's some effort. Uh, he, he does look like he's about to fall asleep and the angle is really weird and makes him look like a tiny ant. But, um, but at least there's effort gone into it, okay? This just looks like, this just looks like his video has been cropped. And you can actually see over here that it has been. 
TJ's backdrop is a set backdrop, but here they cropped it because this is the fucking most jank ass, fucked up, what is this shit? All right, all right, all right. There, pettiness out of the way. Let's do this. Bring your camera up if you want. Uh, yeah, I was gonna try to get on here. I yes, know I saw this John. Yes, do, like the OBS thing. Fucking bullshit. There we go. I have my camera here. Yeah. These guys are all I a bunch of. I over here. These guys are a bunch of unseen uh, anons. Wow, that's that's nice. What are you talking about? Not Sean. Right. I, I normally come so on. It's start just virtual. Bunch of, I oh my. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, the face yeah. paint on. Is this how you normally eat dinner, TJ? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got it. <laughs> Nuts says, at, by the way, as the debate panel's defender in chat, in the past, the scene is so fucking dead. Dude, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I gotta go up. I, I completely. Oh, yes, a stun lock. A, 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 a justified stun lock. Debates? Dude, the debates are so dead. Have you guys noticed that the second I stepped out of the scene, the fucking debate scene went boom! I was fucking carrying the debate scene on my goddamn back! Literally, I was like, dude, I'm done with this fucking garbage. And it was just like, it like imploded like a moldy pumpkin. The state of debates are so bad, I tried to watch one the other day, it was fucking putrid. Boring! So boring! Half of the shows have stopped producing, and the other ones look like fucking this shit. There's nobody who's willing, nobody has a spine. Everybody, you want to know what it is? It's literally the fact that none of the debaters in the debate scene actually had a spine. All of them were doing proxy battles for somebody else. Almost every single fucking debate in the debate scene was a proxy war. And because I was the one who was like willing to be like, nah, fuck this, when I was gone, they just didn't have anything to say. Wild. Yep. Affirmative action for conservatives. Yep. That's what it, the, it was always like that, and it got worse and worse over time. First of all, because conservatives aren't sending their best, and by that I mean they literally are sending their best, their best are just pathetic. Dylan, as, as I understand it, Dylan's been up to some serious things. Like, uh, like as uh, last I checked in with Dylan, he was like, he's doing a documentary in Ukraine, which sounds pog as fuck. Sounds like a way better use of time than the debate scene. Uh, the debate scene had the potential to be a lot of fun when it served as a vehicle for interesting conversations. The debate scene was very interesting when it served as a vehicle for genuine, deep, and interesting, contentious conversations. And then it became all about uh, drama-baiting proxy wars, and it was boring as shit. And everybody got tired of it because, as it turns out, having the same drama every week, I'm going to cancel the only person with a different opinion and try to and like and make a huge stink about it and call them the worst person on the planet and, 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 and fucking Kiwi Farms the shit out of them. As it turns out, that doesn't work so well. Anyway... Whatever, we're on to, we have sailed, not only have we sailed into better seas, we have sailed into a better reality. A reality in which none of us have to give a shit about stupid debate drama because I fucking retired. And instead, we get to watch other things like this. Once in a while, something bubbles up to the surface and uh, we get to watch it and have a good time. Hey, there we go. All right, let's watch this shit. Nice. I got a dinner, full face paint and shit. And I gotta so bring it to blend into the background. I gotta bring this up. Oh, it's by so the predator, bad, but I don't. So Did what's the so? What started oh. your shift, TJ, to being first of a all, based TJ. anti SJW to a woke feminist? Oh no! Well, I had some other things I wanted to say first. Oh okay. Uh, wait that. a minute. Wait a second. TJ's even more based. TJ didn't make up for this appearance. Hold on. I have to hide. Look at that. TJ did fucking makeup for this appearance. That's based as shit. Why do they have this up? Why do they have this fucking still? This like fucking weird still up. How am I going to fix this? Do I have to like go like this? Oh God, that's so bad. It doesn't look good. There we go. Well, now we can at least see him. 
Okay. All right. There we go. Yeah, I was say. Well, the first thing is, uh, it was not a hot wax video. I don't know why people keep saying that. It was hot mm -hmm. oil. Oh, okay. It was oil. Yeah. That's why I wanted the. Uh, um, for those of you who don't know what's being referenced here, uh, many, many years ago, there was a video of uh, the amazing, excuse me, there's a, a video of the amazing atheist um, pouring hot oil on himself and then uh, fucking himself in the ass with a uh, banana, I think. Um, it happened from a long time, it was like a long time ago, but people bring it up all the time. Um, and he literally, like, he has no qualms about it. Like, he's literally just like, yeah, uh, I I like getting fucked in the ass. Not like, you know, like giga chatting your way through it by being like, yes, my ass getting fucked feels good. That's like based. Okay, it's to fucking giga chat your way through. Yeah, he was, re yeah, if I remember correctly, it was revenge porn, literally. Yes, hot oil is uh, extremely painful, but that's um, often the point. Um, that said, you should be pretty careful about uh oil uh don't do it unless you know what you're actually doing seriously anyway let's continue uh, just so you guys know what's being referenced here the I mean, hd I, copy honestly yeah that's the, that was the main reason i wanted to come on and just be like hey you know like Listen, don't, wasn't don't like... besmirch me as some fucking wax peasant all right right i actually think wax is fine too i'm fine with people it doing was that. high quality oil you know, TJ, what is that, who, who, wait, that who are you oil? sending this video to? TJ? I want to know, is that some kind of app or do you really have, because I play with the apps too. I've, I don't know if like, I can't no, tell I'm, if that's I'm an app or not. It's is, called, it's called <laughs> face paint. But so it's, like, it's, you're just sitting down to dinner. You're like, I, uh, what you are witnessing right now is three white, uh, four white guys being shocked by style. Okay. They've never seen it in their entire lives. The dude who they're they're poking fun at him while using LinkedIn fucking avatar like Avi images, uh, and they're just like, "What the hell's wrong with your face? You put paint on it. You have a unique appearance." I would like uh, some spaghetti and oh. Yeah. Like By the way, Maori tattoos are based as fuck. Uh, they're like some of the coolest looking face tattoos on the fucking planet. No joke. Anyway. Let me get ready for dinner. Yeah, you know why not? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I don't. I, like I think it it's so. Honestly, I respect it so much. As somebody who has done some pretty absurd uh, outfits over the time, do you guys remember when I painted my face red and wrapped my head in bandages? As somebody who does some pretty radical stuff with her appearance, I think it's based. Okay, I think it's based as fuck. I should do that. So more yeah, often. I was watching the, the fucking stream for a while, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I'm getting <laughs> bored being on the sidelines. Just wanted to jump in and see what the fuck's going on. Cool, All cool. Right. Fight. What do you mean? Who'd you send that video to, and why? <laughs> yes, I do exoskeletal patchwork, and I love that band. Why are we on that? Top? I don't no, know. I don't brought remember uh, who I sent it to. It was a. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like Thank he sent you, a dominatrix. Rosie. I mean, uh, as far as I could tell. Uh, was it actual justice warrior that said that his, yeah. his yeah. version of events is uh, accurate? Okay. Uh, as for why I sent out multiple ones, well, for one, I didn't because both of them were kind of sent around. Like that video was already sent by the time right. the other one came out. Right. But also, I don't really care. I have sent other people videos since then. I really don't give a shit if they leak or not. If you want to go watch mm -hmm. me uh, stuff things up my ass well, or whatever. TJ, TJ, in our that should be a Patreon tier, shouldn't it? Do you have the links? TJ, in our defense, we didn't bring up the banana. Our chat did, so like we would never. Actually, actually, TJ brought it up. I was gonna say, yeah, I brought it up because I saw it in your chat. But whatever. By the way, guys, I just want you to point out, like these are four like bog standard conservative idiots on the internet, and the like. A, a very, very masculine uh, uh, straight guy, as far as I know, straight, maybe pansexual is a better way to put it, but, but you know, generally straight, straight and, and a uh, very masculine dude comes on and the only thing they can obsess of is his uh, leaked sexual uh, tapes, solo sexual tapes from years ago. It's fucking... Okay, he's bi. He's bi. Okay. Yeah, I figured he was probably Pam. But you see what I mean? 
Do you see the fixation? That even if you are, even if you are sort of traditionally masculine, even if you uh, have been like openly um, straight for most of your time, it doesn't matter. They they are obsessed. Conservatives are fucking obsessed. It's, it's oh, okay. Uh, I'm not trying to be by erasure. Ah! You all are so picky. You all are so fucking picky. Yeah, we would not. We chat. would not. Yeah, we would not. I mean, yeah, we're, I feel like now. we would. <laughs> no, this is a highbrow show. This is high class. Yeah, of course. This we is a try. highbrow comedy I mean, show. Yeah. Serious I mean, we show. do some lowbrow stuff, too. I mean, it's no. not all highbrow. Adam, no. I refuse don't, to believe it. Don't say right. that. What are you talking about? I, the, half that stream, I had some dumb anime head on. That is no. true. You had no. the autism head on. Well, that's where your brain goes for, like, <laughs> lowbrow. <laughs> Anime. <laughs> Anime hat, yeah, that's the low. Listen, listen, as a woman who is frequently called both mommy and daddy, I'll have you know, I deeply appreciate the bisexuals and pansexuals out there, okay? Okay? All right, for the record. List of low brows, yeah. To, do you want to talk about fascism? The Why? Well, I, I, well, what about the... I'm I actually more kind of agree with the... With actual justice warrior on on that, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. this kind of like I don't know. I guess at a certain point, I get so bored of the semantics uh, arguments, where it's just like let's quibble over a definition for you know. Well, that's three what hours I said. <laughs> oh, okay, well then you said. I'm, I'm someone said. <laughs> I have been on that train. Since you guys I sound very similar. Thing. Thank you very much, Ron's KFC. Uh, by the way, for those of you who have donated, I will be reading out the donos a bit later in the stream. Uh, I got overwhelmed and couldn't keep up with them, but I want to make sure I read out everybody's donos. Ron's KFC, have a wonderful night, and thank you very much for supporting me. Truly. Sorry about that. I'll try That's to sound right. different. I'll talk in with my cringy accent. No, I meant Mahler and uh, Sean sound very oh, okay. similar. He does sound just like I, I just wanted the free credit, honestly. Racism. There you go. Against the Welsh. No, so, okay, well, wait a minute. So, has your, do you feel like your position has changed from 2016 at all? Or, or no? I mean, it'd be pretty fucking pathetic if my position hadn't changed since 2016, mm -hmm. I feel like. Surely not okay. on everything. But, it, I mean, it could change for the better or for the worse, though, right? Right. Well, that's subjective as well. I fun, mean, you... Right? <laughs> it could have changed for the better or for the worse. Do you think your position has changed to the better or the worse? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm stupider than I was. I, my opinions have gotten worse. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, I know, but Tim, you could be like a full Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that right. if you that if you, well, your I mean, I, you, I said I was a molecule to the left of Hitler. So I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's still pretty far if you zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative. Yeah. So what? But so ha so you think you have changed? Do you become more leftist? Do you become more woke? What's going on here? I don't really. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys about that woke word. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, well, woke is generally I characterize it as people who have woken up to the fact that liberalism will not solve society's problems and want to okay. move to a more leftist uh, way of dealing with these issues. All right. Okay. And they and and that is why Star Wars is woke, everybody, because Star Wars, made by uh, by the uh, uh, by the the incredibly leftists over at Disney, uh, they've grown tired of liberalism and they want communism now. I don't really feel like that's how it's usually usually used. I feel like it's just kind of like used as a weird weird way to dismiss like creative decisions in television shows that people don't like. Dude, it's this like, is... Well, man, oh, no! Whoa! <laughs> he triggered him immediately! Oh! Is... A nightmare of my existence. Darting between streams, they literally, the words will change definition on who I'm talking to at the time. It's like, so I don't so, like using words anymore. <laughs> yeah, words Gen are bullshit. From now on, we just communicate in clicks. People use woke to yeah. mean political politically correct a lot if that's what you're okay. referring to like oh this this tv show feels too politically correct but sure i'm saying that the ideology of politically political correctness comes but then you have a show a like the boys that's like very not politically correct but i've still heard people describe as woke because it leans kind of mm. left in its messaging i've, I've only seen this i can not really comment like, on that but you know there's fucking <laughs> there's a lot of I'm not going to comment on that. Uh oh. Stuff in there that doesn't really seem very politically correct, but. Sure. Well, people about, like, can use the term incorrectly. 
Uh, Wait, I don't I don't want to tangent off. You go ahead, actually. I mean, people are calling Witcher woke, which, I mean, Witcher seems pretty incredibly anti-woke. At least the first yeah, season I mean, is like, all about a woman sacrificing her the more baby you, for her job. If you, try to, if you try to watch it, you will fall asleep. So it's well, that definitely is a anti-woke. Too, but I, just, I feel like I'm not getting a, an answer, though. Like An answer to what? Well, has your have your position changed at all on, yeah, on these issues? Of course, I mean, obviously, yeah. Like, but like, what? How? How did this happen? How did the change occur? Um, probably, probably mostly Donald. Getting really, really big. Um, I'm getting really big. Like Sargon, mad at Shu for being too much of a leftist energy here. Feels like like almost identical, where they're just like. Well, why aren't you as why aren't you as based and red build as you used to be? Uh, I grew on some positions, and some of them you've misinterpreted. What the hell? You're woke. You're why do you get woke? Trump. Okay, so I was right. A lot yeah. of this is a reaction to Trump. Yeah, to be fair, that's what you said. Yeah, fine. You. I, mean, win, I think it you kind of uh, you know, like at a certain point, there's like a, a, a certain pressures build up, and you have like your do or die moments, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, it, if if it's like you're marching with a group of people, and then this issue comes up, I mean, it's the same thing that happened with the the whole like atheism plus thing that was referenced earlier in the stream. It's oh like, man, I remember you're that. marching down the the. It's like, hey, we're, we're doing this, this group's going here, and this group's going here. Who you, who you fucking who you with? It's like, oh shit, I guess I'm going that way. <laughs> are you still? Right. Um, I know it sounds like a weird question, but are you still fully like atheist? Would you say? Oh yeah. Course. Yeah, I haven't. I mean, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any reason to start believing in God yet. I mean, I don't know. No, I know. It's just a lot of different YouTubers end up uh, having different thoughts about different things, and I was just because I, I no, haven't I seen know. this stuff I mean, in a while. That's all. Usually, it's people that turn to be more right wing find God, not people that turn to be more left wing who find. I mean, you know, yeah, I've, you know what? Uh, hey, what the hell was that? Why did it do that? Bullshit! By your definition, you'd still be straw banning them. That's a pretty... That's a pretty big gap, though. It doesn't make any sense to me. Who cares about that? I want to know why... Share it with a Janus, sir. Right. Yes. Yeah, so why do you... <laughs> so you have respect for Christ as, like, a character from a movie? But... I just... I feel like I'm not getting a, an answer. Um, okay. I found a Here we a go. Different we found it. Of context uh through which to view religion i, I don't know i guess i mm-hmm. have a greater admiration for uh philosopher uh, than i did when i was uh, in my <laughs> atheist heydays but um a, what'd you say i don't i don't, I don't, I don't a greater say. admiration for what for lucifer oh okay i got you lucifer too but uh, i said christ but oh i'm sorry oh. I, I heard you. so are I, you i thought you said lucifer as well <laughs> Yeah. Are you so? I'm glad we clarified. Are you so? Have you? I classify like an anti theist as someone who believes the world would be a better place without religion. Like they see religion, uh, yeah. Out. I would say I'm an anti theist. Okay, so you are still an anti theist, right? Yes, yeah. So, why do you <laughs> so you have respect for Bye, Christ? As, like, Thanks a for coming by. From Hope to see you again or, in the future, yeah. You, or you know, I mean, if he was a real person, then I guess I respect some of the things he said, right? I respect mm-hmm. the paradigm shift that he represented, yeah. You he's think a revolutionary. A that without religion, the world would be better off. What's that? Or do you think it's a guarantee the world would be better without uh, religion, or do you think there's just a strong? No, chance? I don't think it's a guarantee. I don't think anything's guaranteed. Because yeah, that's that's the part where it would probably the doubt for me would probably stop me from saying anti theist. I used to. So when I, I, sure. I would say that I'm, I'm less uh, dogmatic in that thinking than I used to be because there used there was a time when I definitely thought like um, that uh, if you just got rid of religion, all the world's problems would would uh, dissolve away, and I, I certainly don't think that way anymore. Hmm. If you could kill off two religions, like just write them out of the script, like which ones would they be? Christianity and Islam. Wow. Yeah, wow. chosen people. Still the around. Jews inherit the earth. There you go. I guess so. They got to share with the Jews. Whoever else is left, Rastafarians. Oh, I don't know. That's the second ominous uh, moment that we've had so far. The first one being. Ah, people, people when become more right, and then they get religious. That was the first one, and the second one is uh, the moment he says that if he could, if he could, like basically just delete two religions off the earth, it would be Christianity, Islam. The first thing that two of them jumped right to it, making jokes about Jewish people. Hmm, I wonder what's going on here. I wonder what could be going on in this stream.
All right, what's your what's your third one since you gave that answer too fast? No. Yeah. Wait, wait, what was it? Jew. Terrible. Who went full Nazi? Do you see no molecule left of Hitler? Do you see no? Man, I can't believe you didn't pick one of the ones with like an eight armed like elephant man or something like that. Those ones are cool. Know. Scientology <laughs> was on the table. You let it go. But yeah, I, just, I, 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 was, I mean, I wanted a clean sweep of the Abrahamic religions. Yeah. Mm. Do you see no value well, again, in religion? I, I guess uh, I guess Mormonism is still around at this point. So well, that's part of Christianity, isn't it? Mm, yeah, they, are. they got their own book. I don't know about that. Mormons are uh, definitively and uh, uh, Christian. They are they are definitively Christian. Okay. I guess the Mormons are all we have left, unfortunately. But. Mm. Yeah, maybe I should have said Mormons and not Jews, yeah. but I will. You can take it back. No, hey. you can't. They're gone, actually. Okay. As long as I can still have the bagels and locks and stuff, it's, it's fine. Nice. How do you feel about, like, the eras of the internet? Do you look back on the skeptic days, era, whatever, and think, like, man, if only I had done X... Or do you just feel like whatever that was a time and now this is? I don't the really time. spend too much time worrying about the past because it's like unchangeable. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know, learn a thing or two maybe, but uh, that's about it. Why did you guys all break up? What happened? <laughs> like, well, I, I, who cares about that? I want to know why you watch so little hey. of our video. That's what I care. <laughs> why did you guys all break up? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know, learn a thing or two. I mean, it's like unchangeable. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know, learn a thing or two, maybe, but uh, that's about it. Why did you guys all break up? What happened? <laughs> like, well, I, man. who cares about that? I want to know why you watch so little hey, of our video. What? That's what I care about. Come I on. mean, we're getting to know him a bit better before you start. Yeah, you know, like, like, don't, I mean, like, Jesus Christ, buy I me dinner know. first. For Listen. Fun. I wonder why. I wonder why people would be disinclined to watch a video that fucking looks like this mess. Okay, go Adam, ahead. you gotta kiss their neck before you reach go the Go ahead with your... Yeah, like, smaller... need to be fucking wined and dined a yes. little bit. Go ahead look, with your dumb look, questions. TJ put on his best wow. makeup for, for you. Adam. I have a feeling yeah, he just had that on. Putting on his makeup this whole time, you know? No, I was He's doing old. a video earlier. I was wearing... for. A I figured, video. yeah. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, so uh, why didn't I watch more? I don't know, because I, I got fucking bored, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They told you. you guys I was doing it for like 10 minutes. I mean, well, I watched 10 minutes of it. It really pissed me off when you guys fucking said it was straw manning, because that doesn't even, that literally doesn't make fucking sense. How well, no, you okay, so let's a hypothetical finally, fucking person? Finally, let's get some substance going here, okay? All right, okay. yeah. Do you understand Wait, there's it. the two sides of the abortion debate are both sure. interested in bodily autonomy. They're just focusing on the body bottle no they fucking are not that is the most stupid and dis literally only an idiot like these people only these merchants who like launder fucking right wing talking points would ever make an argument like that christians do not give a fucking shit about bodily autonomy they never argue from the position of bodily autonomy. What are you fucking talking about? Bodily autonomy of the fetus or the, I don't know, what, what do you call an unborn baby? I guess it is a fetus. Yeah, a fetus. Or yeah. you can call it an unborn baby. So when does, when to. does, I, I mean, I, I don't agree. Like the, the Christian conservatives will say life begins at conception. I don't, like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, right at conception? Come on. But at some point, you got to say, listen, there's some bodily autonomy going here for the fetus, yeah. so. Sure, yeah, okay. So, but you you agree then, though, so that you don't, no, obviously. I, mean, I don't know. I, I guess that there, I mean, there, there's always going to be argument about, like, when, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, but do I you know. have I, a position I there? As for like when life uh, begins? Yeah. Well, we, we, or when, when we, rights be, should be extended or, or whatever yeah well, sure. Are, i mean are you in favor of abortion up till conception or or what up till conception that's that's not really yeah, possible yeah. So that's so. Just you're right up, up until <laughs> <birth. laughs> <laughs> 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 birth. i'm scared of your words uh the scary place up until birth yeah i don't know um maybe uh it's, it's, i would say tentatively yes but uh, really? Okay. I would, I really comfortable I'd be more comfortable with with viability, I guess. But uh, okay. Well, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big gap, though. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, you know, if I had to choose, like if it was like all you or nothing, I would definitely, I'd take up till birth before I took uh, like a middle ground. But I would say via, fetal viability is probably really? the, the benchmark that makes the most sense yep. to me. Okay. Yeah, I would I, too. Yep. Uh, I could totally when, see when why is you viability. Would... For, uh, Personally, I agree with this position as well. Um, I I think that uh, that uh, first of all, the late term abortions are extremely extremely rare. Um, people don't generally want that. Uh, they're da they're also more dangerous, so they're avoided. Um, but uh, I believe personally that. Uh, it's significantly better to uh, have a, a, a to allow for late term abortions um, than to deny um, than to to force women to carry to term, um, especially because so many health issues can re can be the result of that. So, um, yeah. So uh, first two, you can have abortion in the first two trimesters, according to the viability. Yeah, no, no, that's I mean, according to Roe. There's definitely like, been um, there's definitely been some people who have been. Yes, the case in which most late term abortions occur is because is generally because of like a cataclysmic health issue that threatens the life of the mother and the and the and the fetus. I don't even think viability. Uh, Mixed Dizzy says I don't think viability is even like a good standard. I think doctors and parents should be able to make triage decisions about how and who to save during a dangerous pregnancy late in term. Yes, I agree. I agree. I think people have the right to make that decision. Um, yeah. Born uh, within that time period and, and you know, uh, lived on. Actually, uh, my uh, one of my sisters was, uh, at the time, the most premature baby ever born to survive. Right. Wow. Uh, I, I, she was born in uh, 19, uh, must have been the late 70s, early 80s, actually. So you know how many weeks yeah, it was? When we, she was written up in a, in a number of medical journals. I think she was about, I think she was born after uh, four months or... Or something like that. Wow. So Wait. so when we accused you of straw manning, we were accusing you of straw manning because you were saying that conservatives only wanted to control women's bodies. Yes, that is literally true. That is the actual argument behind every single fucking decision that conservatives make. Conservatives want to control women. They want to control sex, making sure that pregnancy always has to be carried to term is a way to control sex that is the primary purpose of it it is there is and there is no ifs ands or buts about it the idea that uh, that a conservative who will literally in the same breath vote to shoot down uh, a any sort of welfare solu solutions for living children, but then will force a woman to carry to term no matter what, that their motivation is because they care about the child? No, they don't give a shit. It, there's, a, there's an adage that says they care uh, that uh, conservatives care about a baby until the moment that it's born, and then they don't care if it dies. And legislatively, historically, and even argumentatively, that carries out as true. Conservatives care about restricting what women can and cannot do about guaranteeing births much more than they care about bodily autonomy right. when that's not really the case they're they're they under their their belief system is but you that, have to but wait but like well my but my point is that you can't speak for all conservatives my, my point is like, you know, if I make a criticism that's very mm -hmm. general in nature, you can't call it a straw man unless I specifically picked a target and the argument does not apply to what they've actually said. Well, the argument literally is a straw man, though. But I wait, mean, doesn't the, so the right all the time says the left just wants to kill babies. They enjoy killing babies. Right. Like, how is, is that not a straw man? I mean, it's not a complete straw man because there could be people on the left who do just enjoy killing babies. I don't know. Yeah, but but yeah, like but if, they say, care... if they say the left in general, mm -hmm. like everyone on the left is like that, then I guess I could be a straw man. But I don't but feel that like implied... I said everyone on the right just say... wants to take away bodily autonomy. I said about I said that people wanted. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I did say that, but mm -hmm. um, well, str straw man is wait. a is an argument that's easy to defeat, and obviously. Well, a straw man is yeah. It's when you give your when you put a position in your opponent's mouth that's not yeah. It's easy to what they actually believe. Like you're but yeah. Are, I, I, but I genuinely believe that there's tons of conservatives out there who do not give a shit about fetuses or fetal viability or any of these. They don't. If conservatives gave even the slightest shit about babies, about fetuses, about unborn babies, they would be 
all in for uh, medical funding. They would be all in for uh, programs that help pregnant women. They would be all in for a social safety net that ensures that children have food until adulthood. They would be all in for um, subsidizing um, health, for subsidizing childcare, but they don't. And they never have been, and they never will be, because it's about controlling women's bodies. Things and just want an excuse to control women. To be fair, yeah, any of these that. conservatives openly claim that's what they want. They just want I mean, to control. I've, I've never heard anyone make that claim. Because even then, even by your definition, you'd still be straw manning them. Even if that's what they truly wanted. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I feel like a straw man would necessarily be an, a position they don't hold, not just a position they're co- So this guy's argument is, if you say that the conclusions of someone's argument are different than what they claim, you're straw manning them. So basically you always have to believe conservatives, even if they're lying to your face. That's the argument that this guy's making. Overt about, otherwise the standard, I mean, if we're going to that, if we're gonna go, but we're gonna, if we're gonna go down that road, then like literally anybody who states their opinion cannot be, you can't argue that that's not oh, their genuine motivation. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Like yeah, you could, you know, who like, cares about motivations that much? I, I got a question about viability, though, because that's like your standard. Oh, never mind on that. Then. No, come on. <laughs> it's the straw manning is way more interesting. No, no, who a cares, straw man is where you take. Who cares about the viability? Okay, Look, okay. We're a straw man is where you take a weaker so, portion oh, of somebody's argument and you construct it and take that down rather than hey, their Sean, own argument. Sean, are you pro life right. or pro that's choice? True. Uh, I'm pro not only pro-choice, I'm pro-choice to send the children to the mines. They, we okay. need to bring back child right. labor. I like that. Uh, so I guess everyone here is pro-choice, so. But I, I mean, yeah, I, at we are point with... is way more interesting. Well, I, I, than... I'm assuming everyone's drawing the line at different points and that's like the big debate, which is why right. I, I do err on the side of, if you're going to talk about this topic, you probably should reference the fact that the, why, why not reference the best arguments from both sides instead of just saying, you fuckers, you just want to kill babies. Right. It's like, all right. You know. Baby killers <laughs> versus women's body controllers is just, I mean, it's two straw men. Well, but like, to get to the point though, like, if it, okay, so like a fly lands on someone's head. You know, yeah. and mm -hmm. you take a hammer and you smash them in the head with it mm -hmm. and you murder them. It's like, mm -hmm. well, your honor, I, <laughs> I was just trying to kill a fly. It's like, well, I don't believe you. Oh, well, you're straw manning me. Like, I don't know. Like you just, we just have to take everyone at their word. No one can hey, employ you, deceit Smith. as a Welcome tactic. Back. Like, well, on. yeah, but so you're saying all of people arguing about abortion on the pro-life side are employing deceit. I mean, let's your honor. It was simply a heated gamer moment. When I put the when I was trying to hit the fly with a hammer and crun and crumpled in the skull of my friend, it was just a heated gamer moment. Let's break it up. How Not many are them, employing? No, I don't think I don't think all. I think there's a so lot how of many are employing are, deceit and how many are? How the, how the fuck would I know? I don't know. Well, you're making if you're going to make an argument that I say enough enough to enough for it to be notable. Well, why, but so, why if, you, but if it's five percent, why would you say you know five percent are employing more deceit? Five percent. Okay, so if it's 20%, why would you tar the other 80% who are operating in good faith by saying that they're... they're because the conclusion of their arguments is the control of women's bodies. Because the decisions that they make prioritize controlling women's bodies. Argument is that they want to control women's bodies. Because it's, it's more fun. Bruh. More yeah, but interesting. You're, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I know mean, like how. You, wait, well, I mean, like, are, I mean, our audiences on the internet so fucking brain dead. Like, they like, have you never employed hyperbole? Have you never fucking made the case we may, a little stronger do. than it needed to be made? Just well, like for it's, comedic it's not a, effect, or it's a for but it cre it's creating a negative stereotype of your, or whatever. You know, I don't, you don't think. I, it, I, Here's I don't the think problem. it's dangerous at all to do that if you have your audience believing for even a second that their entire opposition want to kill or uh, control women's bodies. Wouldn't that maybe mm. encourage them to think, yeah, fuck these people? Well, that's the point, right? I want them to say fuck those. Based! Oh my god. Okay, I absolutely need to get the, the giga chat. Dun, 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 oh my god, Chad! Giga chat TJ moment. That's the fucking point, is to 
show people that they're that these opponents are trying to do something bad those people yeah <laughs> but you don't want to go too far because then they might do something <laughs> well you know what i mean the, I'm, going, the, I'm going way further than just voting but now there are now we're talking about the point of uh there was a uh, a actual justice lawyer brought up earlier with like, well, how, how accountable are we for the shit we say? You know, do we believe in free speech or not? So should I be censored because I said something that was like no, too, we don't, too strongly worded? The better argument for the argument of speech here would be, shouldn't you speak accurately instead of dangerously? I don't know if it's dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah, it's because a common telling, talking point. I think, I, think, there's a lot I, of, I, think I think there's a lot of people on the, I think there's a lot of people on the right who are fucking, I mean, like, look at their, I mean, actions speak louder than words, right? I think when you look at the totality of actions from right wing people can, Rio, on this issue, it's like we're pro life, we're pro life, we care so much, we care so much. But then it's like every social program, you know, this guy right here is uh, well, he's he said he's pro choice, but he wants he wants the the slave mines uh, back, right? <laughs> no, 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 kids. you you have to pay them. Don't be uh, ridiculous, okay, TJ. Well, sure, Jesus, yeah, for, what's wrong with get your you? minimum cents. wage mine? Here's your okay. little here's here's your ten cents, Billy. Whatever the fuck, yeah. We give you we can be paying company script, right? There we go. No, go you got paid. Sold them. my soul to the company store. I don't know what your beliefs are, so I, I don't know. I could be strawmanning you right now. I probably am, but um, yeah, I don't know. So you what say the, the, the point. The point of the video, <laughs> more so than was to rile people up a bit of being being like, because you want people to act more and save the sort of rights in relation to this. You'd rather use. But look, I mean, like, when it wait, when it comes TJ, to I got a question kids, for you. But when it comes to these kids, though, like. There's so many kids out there that are hungry. And it's like, let's cut the food stamps. Let's do this bullshit welfare to work shit. Let's fucking do everything in our possible. Like, it's just like the George Carlin routine about if you're preborn, you're fine. If you're preschool, you're fucked. They mm -hmm. don't care about anything in your life after you're fucking born. And it all, you notice all these fucking pet topics about Republicans center, center around breeding. They love breeding all of a sudden. It's like their favorite fucking thing in the world. Don't be wait. gay because gays don't breed. Well, breeding is a lot of you people's know. Wait, TJ, are, are, are you fucking, in a? Are, are you in, fucking, Yeah. What? Are you in favor of murdering homeless people? Uh, no, not not <laughs> would, not typically. Would actually. you support let it, then then why don't you let them live in your house? Um. I don't know. I got. Uh, I guess I have enough room here. I guess I could probably let a couple live here. Would it be fair for me if, if you said you shouldn't murder homeless people? Would it be fair for me to respond to you? Well, you're not taking care of them, so you have no say in it. I mean, I would if you were to say to me like we should use tax dollars to house homeless people. I'd say yeah. Yeah, but that's not really off that, the question. So that, well, no, but that yes, isn't is. a way be me because like the the idea of the pro life position, person, right? But the idea of the pro-life position is abortion is murder. So if you're saying, oh, well, you can't be opposed to murder because you won't fund, uh, you know, childhood formula program X from the federal government, that's not really an argument. That's just, but I mean, like, well, it is. You're talking about something completely different. No, I'm not. Because if because you have to actually look at the practical real world results of the shit you say, you can make a bold moral declaration about how abortions murder. But the result of that is a bunch of un, un fucking wanted kids running around, a bunch of hungry mouths to feed that people might not have the means to feed. Your policies brought those people into this world. Take some fucking responsibility for them. So if all those programs existed to the to the extent that you would like, would you change your position on pro-life, pro-choice? That's a, actually a good question. Um, maybe I'd have to reevaluate it. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair answer. Like, typically people make this argument. That I would say no. Um, I, I think that the argument about conservatives not uh, wanting to take care of kids is simply exposing their hypocrisy. Um, I don't think that, that whether or not there's a social safety net that determines whether or not it's a morally good thing to force women to carry to term. But I can also respect saying I would rethink, I would reanalyze it. It's fine. They wouldn't change it no matter what, but... You know. I mean, I, I think that it's a strong, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it'd be something to consider. Um, I will point out that these pregnancy centers and all these like church organizations actually do provide formula and clothes and counseling and sure. create support private, groups yeah, and all that. Charities do, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's better than saying that somebody should do something, in my opinion. Like they're actually sure. doing something. 
Right. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, you don't know. I don't know what your track record of giving to charity is. You don't know mine. So we could both. Well, I know you, you, you give to charity. I would. Assume, I've seen you do charity stuff. Right. So, yeah. But I'm saying if they're pro-life and then they're also providing support for the mothers like after out of their own pockets, rather than saying, I'm going to vote for this guy. And then hopefully they'll pass a thing that raises food I would stamps say one percent. I would say those people have a lot more credibility in terms of me believing that they are actually concerned about the fetus. No, but the, but then like we so if those people have the credibility and then you're arguing against them, what's your counter argument other than like I'm not arguing against them, I'm arguing against the people who believe the other thing. Okay. You know, because like there's the worst version of everything. Oh, you also wanted to know which uh, fascist uh, attributes I had. I remember. Uh, so uh, rejection, rejection of modernism. I think that everyone should have some rejection of modernism, modernism in them. Uh, cult of action for action's sake. There are definitely times when I'm sick of talk and I just want to see something done, even if it doesn't necessarily make sense. Uh, you, but I mean, obviously, fascism is appealing. That's how it's sold to people. Do you uh, understand? Disagreement is treason. I'm definitely very anti disagreement. <laughs> Uh, appeal to frustrated middle class. That's, yeah. I mean, every, the who the fuck doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. Contempt for the weak. Yes. Machismo. Yes. Selective populism. I think everyone's selectively populist. So, um, but I don't know that everybody fits all 14 criteria. I mean, you hit a, you're hitting a lot of them. You, yeah. yeah didn't that was you, about half. Yeah. That's about seven. Yeah. And if we went through the rest, we might even be able to broadly argue and stuff. I just, I don't know. I find that useless, like entirely. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Do you useless. understand I mean, our if critique? If you want to say it's, do you understand my, our critique on that? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. The, do you understand our critique on the 14 points that they seem excessive? I actually, that was the time clear. when I, ha when you guys were talking about that, that was actually when I had to go shoot my video. So I kind of oh, okay. missed that. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call you a fascist just because you hit a bunch of those points on the, yeah, right, four, I had yeah. seven out of uh, 14. We, but I, we I, were, think that I, pretty, I think it's like a matter of like, I don't know if it's just about hitting the points. I think it's also about extremity of expression of those points as well. Well, no, I, sure. I, I, I think nationalist, ethnocentric <laughs> nationalist is kind of the real definition of fascism. So, I mean, you don't fit that criteria, right? You don't seem like an ethno-nationalist. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't even believe in nations. Or okay, well, that would be it. So. You don't that believe it. So, so, yeah. Wait, you don't believe in hey, nations? Hey, it's good to see you. Uh, I don't, well, I don't. I obviously believe they exist. Right. I, just I don't think they should. Yeah. So just open borders for all countries. No, no, not open borders. No borders. Okay. Yeah. How is that going to function? Based. I guess logistically. Oh, like as you know, one world government. Oh, um, to a super nation. Uh, right. Okay. So basically, maybe, maybe you could consider nationalism as like a earth nation. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know. But that's like, I was about to say that's an ideal, but that's mostly just a pipe dream, right? How are we ever going to get there? I mean, I, I, I would assume that where we're at now would probably be a pipe dream to a fucking Neanderthal. Okay, so we agree. Well, yeah, like know. thousands. My, my, my whole, sure. uh, yeah, my whole point is that it, I guess. by the time uh, yeah. we get to like Star Trek levels. It's, it's oh, well, I mean, I don't, I don't expect to see this in my I'm not like expecting this to happen tomorrow or something. How do you um, deal with the fact that the Chinese day. people don't speak well, English? Hang on. But my whole point there is that uh, isn't it worthwhile advocating for like policy and change that we can actually get in our timelines instead of like appealing to I would like utopia. Well, I was just I was asked if I was an ethno nationalist. I mean, I was I just said I don't believe in, in nations. <laughs> so that, I mean, it wasn't like it's not like something I go around advocating that, for nonstop. You know, I thought so. you did. I could have sworn I saw. God, these guys are like really, really stupid. These guys are really stupid. It makes me feel extra, extra happy that I didn't waste any time. Like when I heard that they'd made a video about me. Holy shit. It is just the most vapid bullshit. Video oh yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've mentioned it. You know, I think it's a good thing to aspire to. Oh yeah. Cause I don't know. I find the uh, discussion on borders super interesting in general. Cause uh, I mean, I think they cause yeah. a lot more problems than they solve, but yes, they do. That's my opinion. Obviously, hmm. people, the more right wing you are, the, the less you're going to agree with me. Huh? Well, in terms of actionable policy, I mean, do, should America have no, uh, should just let America just let everyone in, no criteria, no borders control? Uh, no, I don't think that would be uh, good for us. Is this a maximalism stream? It wasn't supposed to be, but these, these fuckers have such an ugly fucking layout that it has turned into a maximalism stream. 
Um, I'm not actually going to put any gifts up because um, that's a lot of work right now, and I really just want to watch the content. But, oh, okay, so yeah. yeah, okay, so yeah, you don't may as well be. No, I don't. Yeah, I, don't I, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't advocate won't. opening borders. I mean, it would have to be. This would have to be like a, a, a an international negotiation where all countries like unanimously did it simultaneously. Yeah, you know, simultaneously right. agree so, to dissolution towards something else. Right. Right. Okay. Which are, are you, is very far fetched with our current paradigm. Yeah. Are you down with like mercenaries running running the show and being responsible for most of the uh, military force that's exercised? Um, mercenary. I mean, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Is what, what would we? What would you qualify as a mercenary versus just like an ordinary troop? A private military contractor. Like, uh, no. Yeah, because that's what the like that's what the whole like piece of Westphalia was meant to resolve. That's the predominance of the nation state. So like in its function of, you know, kind of containing the force at the state level, the nation state have actually worked. Now we have some private military contractors. Hey, guys, I hate to burst your bubble, but. What do you think of the difference between a soldier and a mercenary is? soldier gets paid to go fight a war and they have you know they're provided benefits food housing lodging mercenary gets paid to go fight a war and they're provided benefits food housing whatever almost like soldiers really are mercenaries they just take part of their paycheck in patriotism Typically, but they're usually partnered with the United States of America or with an individual nation. They're not oh, sure. you know, well, starting I mean, like, off. Yeah, I mean, like, just because I don't like a paradigm doesn't mean the paradigm that came before it isn't worse. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, the nation state solves that problem. But I think that if we had a global society, you know, you could also have whatever government that, you know, manages all that would, would provide the military force to whatever extent it was needed. Yeah. <laughs> this is probably one of the areas where TJ and I would have some dis some some technical disagreements that I think we could discuss to a great degree, because um, if I was to have a conversation like on this topic with TJ, I would want to ask him about his what his thoughts about like how you would how you build and how you maintain a so called one world government. Um, I think the concept of a one world government is untenable and not something to be pursued. Uh, I don't. Uh, I think that that inherently the idea of a totalizing imperial government that controls and and uh, passes laws on an infinite number of people is in and of itself not a good thing. But I think we probably I think what he's thinking of is like uh, a a sort of very utopian uh, view. And I would I would like to provide a uh, like technical critique if I was ever to have that conversation because we definitely don't agree like I don't agree with most of his arguments here but probably for reasons that we could actually sort through as opposed to like fundamental ideological differences. That's I mean, what, why would they need a military force? Except I mean, they, to fight they, its I mean, own they, they hopefully wouldn't unless they were like needing to quell like a rebellion or something. See right here, right that is. That's the that's the hot button question right there. Quell a rebellion. What does that mean? Do people not have the right to deny dominance by the one world government? Anyway, I know that's not the point of this conversation, but I would love to have that conversation with TJ sometime. It would, like would a still force. probably be an issue. I mean, yeah, it would be more like a police force, I guess. It'd probably be robots at that point uh, if we survive long enough. I mean, like... I. I know we all saw the video of the spot with a, uh, a a machine gun mounted to his back. So, I mean, it seems like that's uh, that's not too far off. Was that? I don't think I don't think that was AI control though. I think it was just like a remote, mm -hmm. like a guy with controlling the gun on a remote control robot. Yeah, you might be right about that. So. I didn't look too far into it, but I mean, you know, you just see where it's headed. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Um. Okay. You got all I don't your... know where we go from here. In the... <laughs> Do just, we, did somebody wrote do global homo other? cringe in the chat and just made me laugh. Global, global homo, yeah. Well, listen, I don't... Well, people don't like globalism in general. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of... Well, actually, I, did I write a video? Did I make that video yet? 
I don't know. I, I have a video script some floating around somewhere. Oh, the teleprompter thing. I wasn't upset about the teleprompter. I was upset at Sitch for calling my uh, my rant poorly structured. That was what upset. Oh, I apologize. Oh, the teleprompter. Wow. It, wow. wow. Sitch pulled it straight mm. away. The thing so with the ruins admit everything for so everyone. The thing with the, I stand the, by with the, the teleprompter is I don't actually have a teleprompter. I just have a Word document open on my desktop that I was like reading from. Right. Um, yeah. I assume you didn't have just, like an actual teleprompter. Yeah. And people know I do that. I mean, I, I talk about it plenty. It's not like a, a secret. I mean, you can see my eyes darting over there. And it was, a lot it of was, people uh, don't recognize the, that, though. Oh, well, I don't know. It was the poorly structured thing that pissed me off because it's like it's structured to sound like a rant. It's supposed to sound casual. I mean, and mm. I write the I don't understand the idea that like it's like it reeks of artifice to speak with a teleprompter because like for me, it helps me stay on track. I mean, you see like how fucking long winded shit can get when I'm just like, left to my own devices. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's it's helpful to have a, a focal um, document, something to help Wait, me. Did, did you guys say you know, stay on hell, of a nit, hell of a nitpick? Hell of a nitpick. Yeah, whatever. Do you guys say it was bad to have anything close to a script, or I don't remember? No, Adam was just saying that he didn't like that it was so visually apparent that he was oh, reading okay. from something. He was well, saying that maybe the, you should get a teleprompter so that way it's over the camera and then you <laughs> bother yeah. Adam less. Well, my setup's a little weird. Uh, I have four monitors here. And the position of the camera means that if I had a teleprompter here, it'd be very difficult to see all four of my monitors. It's already kind of a struggle uh, to juggle oh, they, all this. They got shit. little ones that go over the lens. It's it's amazing. There's ways you could using what technology really? can okay. do. Really? Oh, see, I didn't yeah. know that. All right, yeah, thanks, Sean. I'll be I'll look into that. <laughs> and we we used to use one when I used to work at a real job with real people. But I go unscripted now, so I am saying any kind of a script is garbage. Garbage. Just just yeah. think about the words all day and then like say it and then fix it in editing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the problem is I don't like having to edit. I try to avoid editing if I can. So doing it mm -hmm. in one take. That's why I didn't you cut know what? That, uh, the, the part where uh, the video. Also, I thought it was pretty funny. And so, with no that's audio. a shame because the video I... had no audio to it. I got OG memories here. I remember the distressed watcher when you used to edit a lot more, make some, make some videos on movies and stuff. What happened to that? Oh, I don't know. We, we <laughs> can all editing. we hate, can all have really, a bad I've performance. I've always hated so. editing, and like the less I can do of it, the better. That's did my, did that's it? My belief. Does it weird you out that Adam hey, legitimately kidding. thought that your face paint was some kind of filter? Like he can't tell the difference between something that's real and like CGI. <laughs> on, I mean, I just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, whatever. I mean, I, I feel like it's kind Who's of roasting him. It's, it's, I mean, that was that funny. Something that hey, that's that was the funniest moment yet. That was good. Paint was good enough to look like something that could be a filter. So <laughs> I'll view that as a positive. Mine's face paint too, so that's cool. <laughs> wow, very very well painted. <laughs> it's incredible face paint. <laughs> I like the cat. Sorry about that. So let's continue our dialogue. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything even left to? Well, I mean, well, 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 these sure, guys, I mean, these guys, I just, these guys are yeah. like drifting off into like substanceless. I mean, your critique how, of us, how dare your critique Shut of us? I up. think. Well, I'm dead serious. You guys are like completely all over the place. Well, We're okay, bring up free speech. <laughs> that was the one well, I mean, the bro, <laughs> dissent, dissent. The show is turning on each other. Oh my god. The whole point is, right? like, listen, we're sitting here, look, any, TJ, uh -huh. anyone can have no. a bad performance. Like, sure. we, we judged you on your performance, <laughs> and we said the performance was, was See, not See, I, I disagree. I don't great. know. Like, well, no, I, I'm sorry. These guys, straight up, should never judge anyone on their performance. The fucking Mr. LinkedIn over here and Sleepy Jones... And fucking guy who hasn't said anything the entire time, they're gonna fucking try and roast him over his performance? Really? There's gonna be like a difference in sensibilities, because like to me, the way you guys do your show a lot of times is like way too low key. And I'm trying to match well, we that. Have, we have bad performances but, too. I mean, like anyone can. The last show, I was almost fucking way too high strung. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, but like, the the performance is one level of substance but i mean you actually made the video about freedom of speech where you were saying that because people 
the, because the right wing is hypocritical about freedom of speech, that may put you in a position where you feel like you can be hypocritical about, or or not necessarily hypocritical, but you're like, freedom of Just speech is not important. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the substance of your video. And we covered all of that I would say, later on. I mean, well, I didn't get to that part, obviously. But yeah. anytime anybody tells you the right cares about free speech i just want you i just want you to take a moment and remember that a bulk of the rights votes come from christians the people who not only uh in you know implemented things like the hayes code implemented uh, have 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 had a chokehold on media but also literally protest every single thing that so much as features a gay character in it they literally freak out and shit their pants if they see in a movie that they don't even like a gay person so just keep that in mind anytime any right winger tries to tell you the right cares about free speech they don't give a fucking shit these guys would if they had the power they would make it illegal for barney to be purple straight up yeah i know that's why why my first question why did you watch so little of our video? Well, no, it's, look, we can move on. Why you watch bad about the free speech issue? Right. No. Yeah. Right. By the way, also that comes off as so pathetic when, like, you when somebody comes to your show to actually have a conversation, and the main complaint that you have, you're like, everybody else, oh my co-hosts are being annoying. The real question is, why didn't you watch more of my video? That's so embarrassing. Uh, first. <laughs> well, okay. So the, have some so confidence. Video, it sounded like your argument was that because the you think the right is hypocritical on free speech, that therefore the left should just throw free the concept of free speech away. I think people should just start to be honest about what they really believe. And as far as I can tell, most people use the term freedom of speech to bolster their position when it's convenient, and then they throw it in the waste bin when it's no longer convenient. And I think people should just admit that and stop kind of trying to lionize this concept, stop trying to disingenuously present themselves as some sort of like free speech absolutist Thank and just, just admit that they Thank use it when it's advantageous and then they throw it away when it's not. So, so I, I agree with you on that point, but as a society, since we know that that is the the tendency of humans to do if you believe in a society where freedom of speech is important and there's some sort of mechanistic process it's some sort of mechanistic process for us to work out our disagreements without coming to to blows violence sure. then somebody has to police the these hypocritical people that are all around us and they're on both sides i'll admit they're on both sides like they're the 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 woke people are the first to throw free free speech away when they're winning, and the Christian conservatives are the first people to throw spe free speech away when they're winning. But somebody has to step up and say, hey, freedom of speech is something important. Freedom of speech is something that we need, especially the people who are end up in the minority who can be subjugated by, by other people. They're the ones that need it most. What? Do we have any examples of like, of like liberals or left wingers like putting uh significant restrictions on the freedom of of speech for right wingers like i can't think of any law at all i can't think of any policy that was that like targets right wingers but i can think of a hell of a lot of right white right wingers currently in this very moment aiming to literally remove school's ability to teach subjects because they think it's too woke but trump didn't get banned from twitter by democrat he got banned because he kept breaking the rules of twitter I hate speech laws maybe but that's not even but there's no truth to it whatsoever like those aren't even restrictions against political speech they're just saying you like we don't protect the right for you um like we don't protect the right for you to like be aggressive towards someone in the workplace you can get fired for that that is what the laws in america say they're not like you are going to go to jail for misgendering somebody the laws just say the government won't protect you if you get fired for um misgendering someone 
Hate crime laws, maybe? No Nazis in the mil- is that what he's talking about? No Nazis in the military? Uh, yeah, you should look and if you should find out who else is restricted from the military. I wonder who else has been restricted from the military. The military doesn't exactly give a shit about free speech. Do we really think that, like, there's a, like, I don't know, right, right-wingers and centrists who are secretly right-wingers, secretly, who are pretending to be, uh, right-wingers who are pretending to be centrists, never have any examples of the left meaningfully impinging on the free speech of right-wingers, but the left always can come up with literally the entirety of history of example of right-wingers doing that against left-wingers. Fuck, we live in fucking America, the country where the Red Scare happened, the country where there was a literal purge of gay people, of suspected gay people from the CIA, FBI, and other government agencies. That happened, like, in probably in the lifetime of some people in this chat. Jesus, it's just so disingenuous and stupid. Sure, but then you also see, you know, like there's video of, uh, remember I covered it, few years back but, but was, uh, I, I'm, I'm Richard Spencer where he was a uh, you know he's a mind he was like you know uh, obviously he was a pretty fringe figure mm -hmm. and you know, he was talking to one of his little flunkies and stuff and they're sitting there you know and they'd made this big freedom of speech argument to defend their right to go out and espouse their views but you know when they thought no one was watching or no one was listening or whatever you know one of the guys was like so do we do we believe in freedom of speech like obviously he knows the answer but he's like in this context, in this moment, do we? And Bridget Brown, like, of course we don't. No, absolutely well, well, not. Uh, but uh, you know, TJ, so I mean, like, I've already conceded. I already agree with you. I agree right, but, with but, you but, that I'm most people the, want to get rid of I'm not freedom making the hypocrisy speech. point here. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not making the hypocrisy point with that. I'm, I'm, what I'm, the point I'm making with that is that there are people out there who will use our naive love of freedom to destroy freedom. Well, that's why would we give up freedom in response to that yeah that's my question that's a point of your video that you're you're saying okay well, it's like since we've it's lost like, it's it like let's deciding just give to get up. stabbed in the hand rather than get stabbed it's like why would you block if you're trying not to get stabbed why would you block the knife with your hand it's like so i don't get stabbed in the fucking heart it's because this damage mm -hmm. is not as bad as this damage so you're so, so if you're, i can give up this freedom here to not be stabbed in the hand if it prevents me being stabbed in the heart I'm going to take the hand stab. Right. So you're saying pr speech prohibitions will lead to some I think you need to maximize our safety. Freedom. You're saying like the you left to, free you have speech to maximize prohibitions freedom, would. But some, uh, I mean, like you can't. I mean, it's like you can't just fucking have a system. If if you just leave everything to its own devices and just say, you know what, non-interference. This is basically like the libertarian philosophy. It's like you know what, true freedom is if. Everybody just steps aside and just lets things happen. There's well, no this, regulation. This, this, I think he would be better served here by asking them specifically what, what free speech has the left taken away from the right? And what free speech has the right taken away from everybody else? Because I always love to see them try and come up with examples. And their examples are always like, oh, well, technically, um, you know... The government said that if you um, if you are standing on a street corner and and trying to whip up a mob to go lynch somebody, that that should be illegal. And you're like, that's your definition of like the imposition on free speech. That like say, the government saying like don't do that, we don't allow that, is like your example of the restriction of free speech. And then it's like, okay, so what did the right do? Oh, the right literally codified it into law that movies can't depict certain things. The right literally codified it into law that television can't depict certain things, that certain types of people can't be shown. The, the government had literal rules and laws encouraged and supported and subsidized by the government against the depiction of interracial relationships? Yeah, come on, bro. Everything just goes the way it's going to go. Does anyone in here think that, out of curiosity, that we should let it all to its own devices? No for, TOS for or rules for speech? speech? No, yeah. well, uh, I'm not a free speech absolute. When, when, yeah, for when you separate in general, just when like you separate out. When no, you no, separate no, I'm out just the curious. By the way, my lovely, lovely imps, it is uh, it is time for a brief pause in which I ask you, please like the stream.
please subscribe and consider sharing this show with people you know. If you think there's people in your life who would think it's cool, ask them to watch it with you. Tell them to come hang out and chat sometime. That's how the show grows. This community is completely viewer supported. I don't have any advertisers or anything like that. So word of mouth is what makes the show work and your likes and subscriptions. So thank you very much. Don't forget to do that. Much love to my lovely imps. Mwah. There we go. Back to the content. When you separate out the you know fighting words, threats, we, we all understand that. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Because well, I believe I that free speech is a good in and of itself. And TJ seems to be making the case that freedom of speech is only good if it produces other secondary good outcomes. Well, no, I would say I would say beyond that, like sometimes you have to curtail speech to protect speech broadly. Yeah, I, I, f I assume that was your point. You're saying like the left's prohibition of speech will prevent a greater and worse right. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say anything for the left or whatever. I'm just talking about my own beliefs here. Well, you're on the left, right? Sure. Yeah. So, but I only no, speak for my, I, assume, I can only speak for myself because, like, there's a lot of people on the left that certainly don't no, speak fair. for me. Um, so, you know, I don't want to presume to speak for them either. Just so to clarify, would, would you agree with this characterization of your position being that the left's prohibition of speech is in order to prevent a greater and worse prohibition by the right of speech eventually? Um, trying to stop. I, I don't like. To, I don't like taking it to the group level, but sure, I guess. Just broaden it out. Sure. Because you Fine. think a great, it, it, you think it cancels out a greater evil. I guess is the point. Yes. Yeah. And a greater repression. Well, I, Meanwhile, I, I, I guess the response argument would just be, but it's a fundamental thing that we. Should yeah, um, it's pretty easy to make the decision that um, to to come to the conclusion that like um, uh, for, forbidding not, like literal Nazis from from getting together. Um, if that if that does work, if if you can make the argument that it works, it would obviously be the better decision to forbid Nazis from being able to publicly speak those ideas. If the end conclusion of Nazis speaking those ideas is a Nazi society, do you guys know what the what free speech laws were like under fascist regimes? Every single fascist regime. Obviously, you all know these guys don't give a shit. This is why this this is why talking with conservatives is such a stupid waste of time because they always are just dancing around their own stupid little game where they go ooh 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 because at the end of the day they don't give a fucking shit. They'll push you into the camp. You should believe in and fight for no matter what. Well, it's I mean, there's there's two responses. One would be that you can't destroy the thing you want to protect in order to protect it in the future. That well, you're not destroying. I mean, you're not. I mean, like, it's not destroying it. <laughs> is the thing. Of course, like, it is. Wait, it, as soon as you say we okay. can curtail free speech, you know, in order to prevent, you know, here it comes. Do you not believe X. in any curtail? I mean, here it comes. This is the part where they. This is the part. This is. He's got them. I'm glad. I'm glad he's finally got them to this part. He's gotten them to the point where they go. Yes. Actually, we are talking about laws that are made against calling for genocide. I like that's the that's what it boils down to. They're like, no, if you pass a law that says it's illegal to 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 call for genocide on the street corner, oh, it dissolves all free speech. These are the same things. Oh God, so stupid. You believe in curtailing freedom of speech in certain instances, right? Of course. Yeah, but you're you're that he doesn't. Well, but how come how come your not instances don't destroy it, but mine do? Because mine are about people lying intentionally. Mine are about protecting intellectual property. Mine aren't about <laughs> ideological reasons. <laughs> That's non-ideological. Copyright is non-ideological. These guys are so fucking brain dead. How can you be so stupid as to say a sentence in which you say, "Oh, copyright isn't an ideological." Thing. I I believe in the curtailing of free speech only for the purpose of private industry. Oh my fucking god! Okay, so that's the distinction. It's it's about ideology. Well, you're you're essentially making the Marcusean repressive tolerance argument right. that we have to make some repression in order to prevent, uh, an, in no order to prevent the evil right wing. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that argument. So I mean, like, yeah, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I don't know. I, could I mean, you're, fami right you're familiar with know. it in that you used to make videos condemning this very idea for years. I remember I condemned the Karl Popper. It was one of the worst videos and worst arguments ever made. But like, you know, I understand if you're not familiar with the, this by name, but essentially this is the. Another Giga Chad moment, by the way. TJ owning his mistakes in the past is based as fuck. I think that's, I respect that a lot. 
the argument that this guy is made. Is, is it that like the right wing is tolerance kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. The, I did make videos against that, and that would probably be one of the very few things I would uh, definitely completely disown. Mm -hmm. So I would say I've, I've completely flipped on that for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't think the arguments that I made then hold water. I think they were naive. I think they're idealistic. I think it was, I used to have a, a sort of faith that in the open marketplace of ideas, truth would always win out over lies, but I've seen that that's not true. To, um, and so I've readjusted my worldview. Do you, think, accordingly. do you think that in, in a more repressed society where, you know, the dominant ideology is trying to prevent these fringe ideologies, you know, with all the best intentions from coming to the forefront, that will lead to truth winning out? Yeah, there's a, a there's uh, a tangible. I was saying, do you think that in, in the world that you're creating, where you're trying to just get rid of these bad opinions that might in the future make society worse, you know, all for good intentions, that... Mm -hmm. By the way, all of this conversation takes place in a country where uh, where you can be denied uh, Im immigration status and you can be actively investigated and persecuted if you are a communist. If you openly declare yourself as a communist, communists and anarchists as well are uh, considered by the government to be extremist groups. So all these free speech warriors sure give a shit about that, about the fact that if you ever we're a, a member of a communist party, which is a lot of the, a lot of people who come from countries that are communist. They were members. You can be flatly and are flatly denied immigration on a fucking daily basis, but they don't give a shit. This is why conservatives, they're morally and intellectually bankrupt as can be. That will work out to truth coming to the forefront. Uh, I mean, uh, one would hope. I mean, there, um, there's so many tangible advantages. Uh, uh, examples right now though of you know scientific research being stifled because people their research comes to conclusions that people can categorize as hate speech so they basically like have to retract well all this all this scholarship around sex and gender what? if they scholarship around sex and gender is what his definition of the left of the left clamping down on free speech is that scholarship on sex and gender exists. Jesus fucking Christ. Come to the wrong ideological conclusions. They make them. So, I mean, in, I just, you're- They you're, what? I'm sorry. Did you, he didn't even, he didn't even finish his thought. You're saying that you're, you've been dis, you know, disillusioned by the idea that freedom of speech would I don't, well, I mean, I, I would say that I don't truth. think any scientific- paper should be uh you know censored or but they're being censored to be under, reviewed or whatever they're being censored under the rubric that you know speech should be censored because uncomfortable truths can do tangible damage would, what the fuck is he talking about that was literally a a drunken babble let can we listen to that again i just want you guys to hear the logic going on here the vagity the rubric that you know speech should be censored because uncomfortable truths can do tangible they're up they are being criticized because the rubric under which uh fucking i'm i can't even any scientific paper should be uh you know censored or but they're being censored to be under, reviewed or whatever they're, they're being, being censored? censored under the rubric that you know s speech should be censored because uncomfortable truths can do tangible damage I would never to certain say communities the, so yeah i don't i don't really buy into that no. literally just literally just vagaries notion so i would never buy into the notion that any sort of truth of any kind needs to be censored unless maybe it's like military secrets or something of that mm -hmm. nature Right, but I, no, I'm just—I'm only you, bringing it up because I'm—I'm I'm saying you—you've made a declaration that you think truth is important, and you've been disillusioned I mean, by I the idea. Not, I think there's not much of a difference between what I believe and what anyone else on this uh, panel believes. I think everyone here makes except exemptions, and right, exceptions to freedom it, of speech. Even, even, yeah, even but mine are being treated by a different standard because of criteria that frankly don't. I don't know. They don't really make any sense. Well, to okay. Me. This is this did, did is okay. They, let me wait. Well, hold on. This is me, what's happening. 
you're okay. doing what I said. I don't know if you listen to this part. You're doing what I said is called I'm attacking the mot, okay. which is that you know you're saying like that packing, the, packing the mot, attacking them. You're you know you're familiar okay. with Mott and Bailey. I assume as an atheist, right? No. Okay, Mott and Bailey is like when you say, oh, you know, refers to the Mott and ba- Bailey castle. You know, the mm-hmm. mot is the wall, and the Bailey is the castle inside of it. And okay. this is like, oh, the mot is the forward-facing so, argument that someone like puts moat? out. That is, is, it, is it Mott or is it Moat? It's Mott. It's Mott. 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 You can conceptualize it like a Moat, but it's, okay. it's a Mott. Um, All right. Gotcha. The Mott is the forward-facing argument that someone will put out that is defendable. So like right. using abortion, for example. You know, the right. right wing says, we care about, you know, the life of the fetus. That's the Mott. Because it's, mm-hmm. okay, you know, it's, it's socially acceptable to say you care about babies. Right. But the Bailey is the quote-unquote real secret argument. And you're right. saying with abortion, like, that's, oh, they want to control women's bodies. Right? Okay. He got it mixed up. He he got it mixed up. Hold on a second. Wait, look. Look, 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 look. The Mott is this one. This is the Bailey. He got them mixed up. While being a pretentious... Uh, ex- like while pretentiously trying to explain it, he fucked it up. God, Fair these guys enough, are. Yeah. Okay. What do these people? What value do these people bring to a conversation? What value has any one of these people brought to the conversation? TJ has actually expanded on a number of his views here. What have any of these fucking slack jawed motherfuckers brought to the conversation? What have they brought to the table besides being wrong about everything? Well, that's what the Mott and Bailey is. The, okay. the problem, and you're saying, so you're saying that that's the thing that's happening with free speech. You're saying, you know, the people on the right are, are using this Mott of we care about free speech, but that's not really what they care about. What they really care about is the Bailey argument that they just I wouldn't. I would, not, I, mean, I would not exclusively leverage that criticism at the right, by the way. But yeah. Oh, I'm just re- referencing in your video. Sure. Um, sure. Because uh, I think you said like, oh, they just want to call people the N-word. They just want to be bigoted, racist, you know, blah, sure. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. blah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yes. the yep. reason the Mott and Bailey argument, ha- which, I mean, this happens in every argument you probably ever had in your entire life, where you at least sense that maybe someone is kind of giving you like a better argument than they, what the true intention is. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason that that plays out is because they're giving you the socially acceptable argument that everyone agrees upon. And right. the problem is sometimes people get so fed up with it. They're so uh, focused on trying to get to, quote unquote, their secret argument that they end up sacrificing the socially acceptable argument. And that's kind of what you're doing, where you're saying, oh, well, because you, they're using free speech to defend their true nefarious intentions, I think you have this backwards free speech. Bit. We have to do away with free speech. The Mott and Bailey thing, I think you got it backwards. It's a no, mor- I don't. It's a moral Mott and the badass Bailey. No, I just mean that the Bailey oh, is the, the harder to defeat Bailey. argument. Never the Mott is the easier to defeat argument. Uh... Regardless. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's well, I mean, like, whatever. The, the concept, I think, is, is sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, okay. No yeah, I, I, don't really, I, I don't know. I don't really, uh, so wait. So let me just try to, like, uh. No, you're actually, you're, you're wrong, Laura. I don't even know why you said that. I'm, I'm correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't, th- I don't think you are. I can, okay. I'll <laughs> send right, you a picture. I'll let you guys work this out while I just. I was going to uh, say, I've yeah. used this nope, several let's... times. These guys are hilariously incompetent. By the way, just so you all know, watching this, has made me feel so good about my production quality and the quality of content that I feed to you all every single time I stream. Just just take a moment to be thankful that you get to listen to me with my like, okay, my audio isn't perfect right now because new studio, but generally you get to listen with crystal clear audio, beautiful video, my sweet face, interesting arguments, amazing content, instead of listening to these fucking yuck yucks fuck, or, fuck everything up and then argue with each other more than they argue with the person they brought on to criticize. I don't think you've used let's it not right. Get, let's know. not get caught up on Mott and Bailey. It's, it's not important. Go right ahead. Let's get uh, back to the Okay, so let me, let me see if I understand what you're saying here. So, regardless of what's the Mott, what's the Bailey, all this <laughs> shit, <laughs> regardless of that, right. um, what you're saying is, there's a so there's a socially percept there's a socially acceptable forward facing position and there's a secret more nefarious position right right um, that's easier to defeat or at least more unpopular 
Yes. So uh, what you're saying is that I am looking at the Republican uh, version of that where it concerns something like abortion, say, mm -hmm. and I am. Well, let's um, use free speech because it's a little. Okay, well, free speech then. So I'm looking at their use of like, hey, we believe in free speech, but really their actual intentions are they they're using it, you know, on issues where they think it can advance them. But then other times they're actually against it. Right. Um, and I'm saying you think that I'm using that basically as like a justification to say, well, maybe the whole shebang is 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 a fraud or whatever the fuck. Yeah, let's just tear um, down the the mod. Let's tear down the wall of the free speech yeah. argument completely. So let's just get rid of the. Oh, it's just it just says Bailey bold and controversial claim Mott obvious uncontroversial statement, uh, which is a Mott and Bailey is when basically you say something like uh, really ridiculous. And then when you're challenged on it, you retreat back to the mod. Um, this guy is just using it really poorly. But I don't know. I think I think this is a dig at his co-host. I think he's making fun of his co-host here. He's saying you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. The socially acceptable thing because they're using it as cut. So basically like they're using it as cover. So let's just fucking uh, erode that. Let's just get rid of that. Exactly. So that we can exactly. cut to the meat of where they're at basically. Right. Yes. Okay. I get you. Um, so why I don't think I'm doing that is because um, I would liken it more to, um, let me see if I can come up with a fucking uh metaphor or analogy or something off, off, off of the top of my head here. Right, let's just fucking not even fuck with metaphors. Basically what it, what it is is like, okay, so you have a right wing that's trying to come to power, uh, but like what ideas need to be censored? I think it might, it might make more sense. I think it might make more sense to focus on like what sort of things I would advocate where, what sort of instances I'd be like, Hey, here's where like some censorship would be useful. Um, and to me, you know, it would be deceit on a mass level because I find it very strange that it's okay for one person. Like if one person goes and deceives another and says, hey, you know, I got this like magical uh, flimity flam device that's going to, you know, cure your cancer and do all these crazy things for you. And it's just, you know, a thousand dollars or whatever. And, and mm -hmm. you know, any disease you have, it's, that person is guilty of, of uh, any number of crimes, right? That's a con man. Uh, but... If you do, if you, if you tell an equally deleterious lie en masse, it's like, oh, well now all of a sudden it's like, well, that's their freedom of speech. Right. So, um, I feel like maybe that kind of thing should be a little bit more examined, uh, truncated, dealt with. Um, and I think that's a, I don't know, it's a controversial opinion in a lot of circles, but I really don't understand why. Uh, because... Do you have a specific example for the mass one? Because if you try to sell a cancer cure to the public and you call it a cancer cure, you'll face the same consequences, like whether you're. Except that there are literally multiple religions in America that teach uh, that teach um, spiritual healing that is not scientifically false. They speak. They teach that prayer will heal your diseases. And they do that under freedom of religion and freedom of speech. So this guy is just full of shit. Doing it around the block or nationally. See, like a lot of the stuff. Oh, because, ivermectin. Because of YouTube. Yeah, ivermectin is another great example. Um, per, a bunch of people proliferating uh, ivermectin. By the way, just so you guys know, this proves my point from earlier. This this exact conversation topic proves my point from earlier about how it, empires can never control, can never actually meaningfully control they're the, the the people they impose themselves on the fact that that um even some of the most obvious obviously false things like the whole ivermectin bullshit was literally pushed on so many levels including and all the way up to the presidency just goes to show you that there's there's no the the the, the sense of imperial control is an illusion that only is that is that is perpetuated by acts of extreme and sudden violence against individuals so that people get scared. By the way, just as a small note. These policies is actually kind of hard to discuss without putting this this channel at sort of like monetization uh, risks or, mm -hmm. or graver ones. But, you know, there was a lot of things that happened around, you know, uh, COVID and the election and things of that nature where there was some deceits that were engaged in. That, you know, I think probably should have been treated a little bit more seriously. 
we we covered the January six hearings, and I mean they didn't nuke our channel. I don't know, I don't know anything me. about the January six. He's, hearings. he's talking about question. COVID. Like, are you talking about potential COVID misinformation about mm -hmm. like different medicines or whatever, whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, horse paste and uh, things of that nature. That's right. So this guy is a weave. Why has he got this anime? Huh? What the hell's going on here? Right. Or just well, the, just the idea that it's like not a real thing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like oh it doesn't exist or no i didn't do that you know jesus well, will protect us or whatever you, are you going to step in and say like sitch come on we this is easy what? well we know what? we the 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 trick with truth is it's really hard to figure out like who has the truth and curtailing freedom of speech i would argue is hindering your ability to come to truth over. I would say the 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 maxim, if it's a maxim that I'd use, would be you know you're entitled to your own uh, opinion. You're not entitled to your own facts. Yeah, but sure, finding but all finding arguments facts. now are yeah. kind of we're not really in a world where people argue their opinions. We're kind of in a world where people argue what the facts are. Right. And well, that's exactly what I'm trying to remedy because that's yeah, not really up I, for debate. The, the <laughs> you problem know, like is facts that facts don't tend to be super debatable things, but the, mm -hmm. it seems like they are in this this current. Very disagree. What is categorized as a fact? Oh, boy. Whew. I have bad news. Uh, if you think, uh, oh, look, never mind. Look, it, it's, it's, a t it's a, be a total tangent to go off on that, but truth in and of itself is an elusive concept. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a reason uh, to stop people from saying certain things. Not even a matter of freedom of speech, just what are they advocating for? If somebody's advocating to try and whip up a crowd to kill you, I think you have a right to respond to that. I think you have a right to respond to that preventatively. Current social context is paradigm, and that's why I think we need to break it. The, the problem is otherwise, that otherwise there is no truth. I, mean, I, if I you want to just if you want to just live in a totally postmodernist you, fuck the truth world, then I mean, like, I, don't, I, do I don't. The problem is that we. We've lost, so many people have lost such faith with our institutions, and that's the only way for to like an institution inst to make a fact claim. And if we don't have faith in our medical institutions, like if, if we look at our the faith that people have in the medical institution does not actually meaningfully affect whether they're telling the truth. People have a lot of faith in uh, had a lot of faith in uh, psychology. Uh, while psychologists and psychiatrists were doing fucking lobotomies, and that science was bunk as fuck. Did you guys know? Uh, fun fact: Did you guys know that um, the entire uh, model of Alzheimer's um, that has been uh, that, that has been upheld for like 16 years um, has was just exposed as a fraud, as in not just uh, incorrect, but that. The person who was pushing it was lying from the beginning and doctored photos. So for 16 years, all almost all Alzheimer's research has been in the completely wrong direction because of one lying, self-enriching team that took advantage of the peer review process to push their bunk science with lies. So faith in the institutions has nothing to do with whether those institutions are truthful or not. Oh, you guys don't. Oh, hold on a second. Let me just show you. I'll, I want. I want to show you this. Yeah, here we go. This is from. Yeah, here we go. I believe this. I believe it was published in. Hold on a second. Let me see here. Yep. Here we go. Here you go. Nice mainstream news source. Uh, allegations of fabricated research undermine the key Alzheimer's uh, theory, theory. A six-month investigation by Science Magazine, Science Magazine, the Science Magazine, a science journal, the one, uh, one of the people who published the original stuff, they did an internal investigation and discovered, here we go, evidence that images in the much-cited study published 16 years ago in the journal Nature may have been doctored. Allegations that a part of a key 2006 study of Alzheimer's disease may have been completely fabricated have rocked the research community, calling into question the validity of the study's influential results. Science Magazine said Thursday that it uncovered evidence that the images in the much-cited study published 16 years ago in the journal Nature may have been doctored. 
The findings have thrown skepticism on the work of Sylvan Lesney, a neuroscientist and associate professor at the University of Minnesota, and his research, which has fueled interest in a specific assembly of proteins as a promising target for treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Science said that it found more than 20 suspect papers by, by Lesney and identified more than 70 instances of image tampering in his studies. A whistleblower, Dr. Matthew Schrag, a neuroscientist at Vanderbilt, raised concerns last year about possible manipulation of images. So yeah, just so you know, the main theory for Alzheimer's for the last 16 years has been totally off, and the reason why very little advancement on Alzheimer's treatment has, has happened in the last 16 years is because one guy and his team was defrauding the entirety of the medical community. There you go. Just, just so you know. Just so you understand that truth is not a simple thing to determine. Truth is not, uh, a, uh, is not um, always easy to discern. And truth does not always work on a timeline. Let's continue. There are medical institutions right now in America, which are like the, the BLM protests. For extreme monetary gain, um, Uncle Gumball. SureShot says the idealized function of truth in society is completely divorced from actual truth, and these guys haven't figured it out yet. But that's because they're fucking. These are guys are like right wingers who believe that America should 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 uh, should be fucking flying the red, white, and blue. Go Trump! Blah blah blah. Uh, the wokes are coming for you. That's what these people are. They don't give a shit about truth. They give a shit about uh, not being criticized for saying racial slurs. That's the that's the stakes for them. The stakes for everybody else is how do we prevent a genocide? How do we fight against people who want to genocide an entire population of people? And the stakes for them is, can I say a, a gamer word in my fucking Warhammer 40k video? It's that simple. Or a, a good example. So before the BLM, before George Floyd uh, died and all the BLM protests took off, you had people on the right who were coming out and they were protesting against uh, mass mandates and lockdowns, things of that nature. And we had all these you know, institutions and experts and doctors and the news would all come out and say, look at these assholes. They're getting in large protest groups and they're spreading, you know, more COVID. They're killing us. Right. And then as soon as the BLM protests come out, you had this bizarre like reversal where you had the news reporting that, you know, 100 or 1000 doctors signed off saying that, well, actually, because the protests are outside, you know, it's totally fine for, you know, thousands and thousands of people across the country to get in mass and, and protest these, you know, protest against systemic violence. Right. So it's when things like that. These people never watch the things they talk about. By the way. How many how many people in chat, just for curiosity, if you were here when I was doing coverage of George Floyd protests, go ahead and drop a drop a hypers in chat. Drop a hypers in chat if you remember when I was lot li doing live coverage of the George Floyd protests. Look at that. We got a couple. Do you guys remember how one of the main things that I dealt with was how fucking dishonest the mainstream media was? That they constantly portrayed peaceful protesters as, as incredibly violent even when they weren't? These people live in a world of their own fucking making. They don't actually know what the news actually did. We covered this. The media was incredibly unfair uh, to, to, to BLM. Not only that, but it had nothing to do with COVID because these weren't fucking anti staged anti-mask protests. These were people reacting to a fucking cop riot. And keep in mind, just so you all know, the, the fucking cops we're also out there in huge numbers. So this is a completely stupid point that this person is making. Yeah, rip Portland. Still wish Portland was around. Said it just doesn't exist anymore. God, I fucking, fuck, oh, fucking conservatives. Oh my God. Oh, uh, I missed reviewing this brain rot with you imps. Doesn't it feel good to like, just gaze upon how stupid your opponents are? Doesn't it feel good? happen that people just basically don't trust anything the institutions say right don't well trust, but this is because like, fact finding institute to make this that is because, decision but this is exactly because people have gotten to this point mm -hmm. in their egos or whatever where they legitimately think that reality bends to their whims that facts just 
<laughs> bend around what their will and that whatever they want to be true just is. And like, yeah, the whole shebang, ha like the COVID didn't become less contagious just because you now agree with the protest. That's silly. Right. Obviously that's silly. Um, doctors signing notes that say that like, oh, well, magically now the entire nature of the disease has changed is obviously stupid. Um, the fact of the matter is, this, ironically, this is a straw man. I would love, I would love to find all of the, all of the glowing Yelp reviews from CNN people on the, the George Floyd BLM protests. This is a argument that happened in their heads. No one argued that, uh, that, that protests were not spreading COVID. It is a scientific fact that not doing an anti an indoor no mask anti mask protest is more dangerous than going outside with masks on to a protest that is a scientific fact but who the fuck was talking about that nobody was Yes, that's also true. Strandy says, I think they did do studies to find out if BLM spread COVID and they found that it didn't. Also, BLM protesters were more likely to mask up. Yeah, what this guy is comparing to, by the way, the example that he used in the beginning was anti-mask protests. Trumpers taking off their masks and intentionally going into incredibly tight areas, standing still, coughing and spitting all over each other. He's just ridiculous. You you didn't like that protest, so it must be bad and spreading disease. And you did like this one, so oh no, never mind. That doesn't spread disease anymore. Right, right, right. Well, so I mean, like, the, like they like the sort of like, just like casual dismissal of truth that I'm talking about here. Like, it you can't just decide the truth based on your ideology. You have to. It has to be the other way around. No, I mean I agree a hundred percent. But I, what I'm saying is that. If you're going to have some arbiter kind of lay out, especially like in terms of misinformation, mm -hmm. you know, in politics, if you have an arbiter lay out and say, this is misinformation, this is against fact, the only thing that could do that is an institution that people have trust in to act non politically. Right. And that's totally not true. Anybody can do that. YouTube did it, Truth Social did it, fucking D Live even does it. Anybody who's hosting any platform has the ability to call something else misinformation. I don't know what he's talking about here. No one has faith in that. And I don't have faith in any institution. And I, that was just the example I was bringing it with the, with the COVID protest. I mean, well, if, if we get to the point of having no faith in any institution, which I think we're kind of yeah, already there, right? then like you just, you don't have a society at that point. But a society, a society without institutions is mm -hmm. not, it can't function. Yeah, but you're, you're talking but about giving those with, institutions the ability to censor people's speech, though. We're saying that's bad. But but specifically with the virus, like the the uh, the signing the letter saying racism is a real pandemic, ridiculous. But the most ridiculous thing is that what huh? we found out now is that outdoor transmission wasn't really that big of a thing. So anybody could have protested. That was actually one of the safer things that you could have done. But all sure. of our medical institutions were like doing lockdowns and preventing people from going outside and exercising. And this was done by, you know, no lockdown ever prevented anyone from going outside and exercising. None of them. Not a single one. Interestingly, you want to know what did prevent people from going out and exercising? Literal legal curfews imposed by the police, which I lived through. I don't know if you guys know that. Many of you don't because you weren't there at that time because I was a small streamer at that time. But during the BLM protests, my neighborhood, where there was no protest, there was no protest in my neighborhood, my neighborhood got put under an 8 p.m. curfew in the middle of the summer. If you were seen outside, you could be charged. There was a 8 p.m. curfew on everyone. Weird. Not a single lockdown ever stopped anybody from going out to a park, ever. But a curfew did. An anti-BLM curfew did. Odd that. The U.S. government, the European governments. So if you were going to censor speech in the name of fighting against COVID misinformation, all of the authorities agreed that telling you that actually outside's not as dangerous as inside 
they would have called that the misinformation. So you're not even preventing the harms that you would try to right. do. Well, that's why there has to be, but you know, that's why there has to be an actual standard. That's just beyond like, it has to be as removed as possible from human beings and our biases, because that's mm -hmm. the problem. That's exactly what I'm trying to remove from the equation to the greatest extent possible. Like it should but be, as, possible. it should be based on raw science. But if you're, Oh, uh, I would love to have this conversation with TJ. This is not this comp like, that they they will these people will be unable to engage in this conversation but i would love to be able to have the conversation some point with tj about how a uh, tr a government trying to put itself outside of humanity does not is is impossible it can't government governments are made up by humans you cannot you, they can only pretend to put themselves above human biases that's the, the and and in that uh, and in that, that that action, the act of pretending that you are above uh, human biases, the act of claiming that you are deter you are making a universal law that all people have to obey regardless of their humanity, is no better than Christians declaring that God has done that. It's the same action. It's the same fundamental behavior going on. Example is something that is novel, and we're not sure how it's going to mutate. We're not sure how it's going to affect a broad population and all these other things, then like your example of the thing you're trying to prevent. Uh, uh, just to say, just to be clear, I will, to I would totally be down to have another conversation with TJ literally anytime. Our last conversation was so fucking thought provoking and interesting. He's the type of person that I love to talk to because we're able to disagree on a lot of things, agree on a lot of things and go back and forth about it to great depth because there's like a genuine interest in what's going on in like, in developing positions. It's, I would, anytime, of course. Is a chaotic evolving situation where this board would not sure. be able I mean, to like, exist. And if, that's the, if that's what the reality reflects, then that's the what the policy should reflect. If it's like, hey, we just like, this thing is evolving rapidly and we don't know what it's gonna fucking do, then the policy needs to reflect that. But sure. that's like, you, but that's your example though, for why you would censor speech, but obviously things changed. And like, sure. and then there and was then ridiculous the, the rules, things like I mean, people. Wait, so the, are you saying the rules shouldn't adapt to the change yeah, in I the love situation? It. I think well, it, like it adapts. Should, yeah. It adapts fast. So essentially, if some, if a group of your well, scientists, we whatever, a, we have a society that, and it's not. I mean, well, COVID's not part of society, but you, you know what I mean. We have a society where you know social change happens way faster than institutional change. And uh, that's that's another issue. Always, that's always the case. like there's like our institutions are slow. They're lumbering. Mm -hmm. They react to what was going the conditions yesterday rather than conditions today. Nothing is effective. Everything seems gridlocked. Um, you know, so there's. I mean, it's no wonder people have lost faith in in institutions. Um, but yeah, I think this, these are exactly the sort of things that need to be repaired. Like we can't like it seems to me like the argument being made here is like, well, people don't trust institutions, so don't even try to solve anything. No, no, it's well, not, that's not that's not the argument. The argument is, is that your example was COVID. Things changed a bunch. Things changed. Positions changed from all the experts on this specific issue so right. many times. Based but if you evidence. had a system where you were like, listen, everybody who's going against the stated current idea of the truth is a danger to society and needs to be censored, then we'd still be doing ridiculous things that we were doing That's in the beginning, said, like sanitizing though. surfaces, by the way, also a waste of time. And 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 that that doesn't help it. Taking a precaution that that ends up not being necessary is not a waste of time. It's being it's taking a precaution. As it turned out, we found out COVID doesn't tend to spread from surfaces, but the best knowledge we had, like this is just stupid. This is just so stupid. Listen, uh, next time there's a pandemic, uh, I hope this guy lives up to his words and licks every doorknob just to prove how chatty he is. Anything, it makes the situation how worse. Would, how would we still be doing that? Because, because there would be behind, no, what's your logic behind that? There so, would be no so challenge what, to the institutional logic that is well, put I mean, forward. The, what, what you're essentially like making the art. Things didn't change because of challenges in the institution. They changed because of new research. But, which but, challenged the previous research what like, you're essentially but, wait, but there's a difference in being like hey guys we don't know more research and study is needed into this versus like covid's a hoax nothing the vaccines full of you know no, but, nanobots you know like, sure, those, sure. like there's things that are like hey i mean like no one mm -hmm. should say we shouldn't take like an edge case of like hey we're the science isn't settled yet we don't know about this 
more research is needed versus like stuff that's just like demonstrably false. Like but, those aren't the same. I, I don't thing. know like why. You're, why are you're you trying guys... to act like every gray area would be like a case for but like some, censorship? Do you, why do you why agree, are you guys? You why are you guys some... arguing in the context of COVID when you have I'll such a? Off, I'll move it look, off of that. Look, look, I'm just look, Sean. That, you have such a better right. argument in the sex and gender stuff because literally research is being. Boy, here we go, everybody. Oh, boy. Here we go. This is going to be interesting. Alrighty, here we go. Being, you know, denied because it affects, you know, marginalized communities. They're literally censoring people's speech over this because yeah. they've come to the wrong conclusion. It's, it's, uh, I don't it's know Galileo. It's that, Galileo so. all over again. But you're yeah, sitting here but, arguing about COVID, which is a. Well, the, the, it was the example that he brought up. Yeah, but, but, but I, my, my what, issue what is, examples is it, do we have where freedom of speech is actually tangibly hurting scientific inquiry it's the sex and gender stuff is it not where freedom of speech is hurting that <laughs> dude his co-hosts left him hanging bro just dead silence it's got to be that no or, yeah, or lack the, lack of freedom freedom of the lack of freedom of speech yeah, bro. Well, yeah it's, a, I, it's a domineering ideology but this but well, what but the issue I'm having is that obviously, TJ, you agree that if you're going to have a standard like this, then you're going to have to have some institutions to to enforce this standard, right? Sure. Yeah. Whether truth. It be national Scienti or scientific truth only. Correct. Yeah. But but you also acknowledge that science is is uh, scientific truth only. I say, re refusing to acknowledge modern science and modern scientific perspectives on sex and gender. Oh. These guys are brain dead. It's an evolving Fucking process. Brain dead. Sure. And that people do experiments like and sometimes they're not even like your official designated scientists. Like they're mm -hmm. actually like randos that are out there. Sure. So if you if you create a standard where where like it's not acceptable to propose alternatives to what the current wait, wait, established wait, 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 wait. but that's not what I said. I didn't say it's not acceptable to propose alternatives. I said it's not acceptable to lie. Yeah, but those <laughs> alternatives will be per alternative. those Wait, alternatives will orthodoxy. be perceived of as a lie. Then fuck perception. Don't worry about perception. Just well, worry you've, about you've what already actually said. is or isn't true. But that's but wait, the part of the problem, like this came up with you're talking about fraud, is that you know when Joe Rogan is talking about uh whatever the horse thing's called, I can't think of the name. Ivermectin. Ivermectin, yeah. yeah. Or even people before that were talking about hydrochloropin or whatever. Yeah. Hydrochloxyquin. I don't think I, I don't think any of these people were like, I know this isn't actually doing anything. I'm lying about it. These people really believe this stuff. Right. Right. But so they thought it was Joe Rogan is a podcaster who was formerly a uh who was who was formerly a um B, uh, 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 a UFC guy. And he was at making without evidence allegations that a medicine would save people's lives. It's not just, he wasn't just sitting there and going, oh yeah, you know, I, I'm going to try this ivermectin stuff. He was literally pushing the idea that the government was lying about the efficacy of, of ivermectin based on nothing, based on vibes. worth experimenting with like you know testing or whatever yeah okay yeah i mean like if they want to say like hey i think that this has potential as a drug and maybe there's some efficacy here then i'm mm -hmm. fine with that that's what they were um, saying no they were yeah, not well, no, but i think some people were fucking go watch it no they fucking weren't they were hawking that shit like crazy people were making runs on stores they had to lock it up fuck the conservative fucking the conservative ass ranch that we buy dog food from nearby they had to lock up their fucking ivermectin i'm going a little further than that when some people started hailing it as like this cures covid like right. that's to me a lie versus yes. like there might be some efficacy in this of treating covid like it's a subtle but important distinction but what about like, what about when the mainstream something what about yeah, when the mainstream but, media calls it horse paste or, you know, horse tranquilizers when it's actually used as a drug for human beings? I mean, then they're the ones.
reason they called it horse paste was because people were advocating buying horse formulated ivermectin. They were advocating to buy horse paste. Not, not fucking a prescription for I. Oh my god, these guys are so stupid. It hurts. Why? Holy sure. Shit. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, like, if if it comes down to that, I mean, I don't think every. I think you could possibly censor every single lie that happens. But like, mm -hmm. if there's a lie that is uh, deleterious to society demonstrably, and it can be 100% verifiably proven as a lie, then yeah, there should be some kind of crackdown on that. Yeah. The the. I mean, the I, trouble sure, is where. I, I don't know. If someone, fucking, if, someone fucking, if someone goes out there and says that this is like horse pace, I think you have to ask, like, is this a hyperbolic statement? Is this a humorous statement? Is this meant to be like a derisive mocking statement? Or are they genuinely, genuinely saying like... They don't know because they don't have any actual examples. They're making up things in their head. They're drawing from vague memories that, that support their biases. These guys don't have a fucking single fucking thought in their brain that has ever been verified against anything. It's all vibes based. It's all gut checks. This is not a drug for human beings. And this is only a horse drug, you know, because there's always going to be, you know, gray areas of, of, right. of speech. First, I think that it's like if anytime there's a gray area, you should definitely you should definitely side on the side of freedom. Anytime someone wants to question something, mm -hmm. side with freedom. They should obviously have the. But like if someone what I'm talking about is the case, the, the edge cases where people demonstrably put forth ideas that are like proven false or that there is no evidence to support whatsoever. What about right. people who suppress ideas example. that are actually true? COVID is a hoax would be an example. Sure. Or, you know, Oof. Be any, careful though, because what I mean, that's such a broad statement or there is a God, so. for that matter, you know, <laughs> Uh, but to be fair, on the code is a hoax one, for example, what if just someone said, like, nah, I think the numbers are exaggerated. If they said that, I'm assuming your line is like, okay, they nah, can say I that. Nah, I think, so their state, their exact statement is, nah, I think the numbers are exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, if they prefaced it with, I think, they're not claiming any sort of, like, actual okay, knowledge so they, or authority there. So, I mean, I mean it, seems like, it, this, it sounds like something that someone would be casually saying at, like, a family dinner or something. I, mean, I don't think you could crack down on that. So, like, if they just went a little bit further and said, you know what, those numbers are just exaggerated. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially if they were, like, in a mass media. Like, if they were just, like... If Alex Jones... If someone if someone made the declaration, the COVID numbers are exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure shot, yeah. Then, yeah. I think that you could do something. Yeah, because my worry with stuff like that is that it just... it It's going to become a cancer of, like, uh, once that's a trigger for getting banned, it's like, all kinds of different statements that are really quick or just casual can then end up getting you banned as well and then well, I mean, it starts fucking, being like well how come code yeah, is the only one we banning, should start doing that for i don't know that subjects, banning from right? the internet like net or whatever is like the solution of that but you know what do you think it is uh, i don't know i think it depends on the forum and who's saying it and you know what like, their well, explanation I, I, was and whether they're willing to rescind it a uh, number of things i'm i'm just i i gun for the classic like somebody get that man a debate with someone else who thinks the opposite and let's see who's uh See what's going on. Let's get some ideas clashing. That's my favorite. Well, the problem way. is, uh, that, you yeah, know, maybe... totally. I think I think the government should every day the, the government should should subsidize an argument um, between a flat earther, um, between a flat earther and a, uh, a a round earther, and it should have to be on PBS, and the, everybody should have to pay for that. And also, they should have to do, um, you know. Uh, moon, moon, uh, moon conspiracism, you know, moon landing denial. Um, you know, oh, why don't we go all the way there? Oh, why don't we just have the government sponsor Holocaust denial? Sounds, sounds like a perfect system. The person who <laughs> has the falsehood is like a, a charismatic, you know, I agree with you. I hate talking, it. good looking, you know, you ultimate, you know, a rhetorician with, you know, big vocabulary Look and at this. very Double, persuasive. Right? Not reading off a teleprompter. Person, yeah, that's <laughs> that kind of stuff. And yeah, then you know, the person who's, uh, who's arguing the other side is like a weak willed so sort of like what, uh, what if uh, what if you had somebody who thought like, you know, like something that's like damaging to our institutions and could go into problems like that. Uh, let's say a candidate, we'll call him Bernie Sanders, uh, had the Democratic <laughs> primary stolen from him. Like mm -hmm. would that would that qualify as something that needs to be censored? Um, I think that if you made it as an outright statement, maybe. 
Mm-hmm. But I think if you said like, hey, you know, I think there's some reasons. I think this uh, the election needs to be looked into. I think there's some discrepancies here that don't make sense. And I think that the DNC might have engaged in some tactics that are against the principles for which they claim to stand. What if, what if those tactics were having more black people vote for Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton? And, you know, <laughs> uh, they don't I don't think they had anyone do anything. I think those black people chose to do that. But that that's why he lost the primaries, though. Sure. I mean, I think that there's, I mean, obviously, you know, you get less votes. These guys just like, look, okay. Remember how I said multiple times throughout this conversation that these guys live in a fantasy in their own head? They just, they just made up a person. They said, hey, what if there was a guy, we, we can rewind this, but they just literally said, what if there was a guy, would you, would you say that like a, a person who said the election was stolen and then they forgot that they made up that guy and they they projected it onto TJ as if TJ had made the argument, even though they made up that hypothetical. Just they cannot keep fact and fiction separate. These people are their brains are soup. Their brains are just like a like free word association. Yo, Ultraviolet, thank you so, so much. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. And thank you, lot of apples. You lose the fucking election. There's no arguing that. But, you know, that doesn't mean that there wasn't some chicanery. Tell that to Trump, buddy. Some different at will. What about Trump? Tell that to Trump, buddy. 2016, less votes won the election. Well, that's true. Electoral college. (laughs) Out of curiosity, because you said, like, one of the extreme problems we'll end up with is a big charismatic leader in a bubble sort of arguing with an idiot, all clips of idiots, and then they'll only galvanize their audience further and further and further. It's like, couldn't... Well, not necessarily idiots, just people who aren't charismatic, people who don't really, you know, like, well, I, which, I, by the I, way, a lot of scientists don't tend to be very charismatic people. A bunch That's of fair, but I, would, I was yeah. also just going to say, like, to be fair, you should worry that they would argue with stupid people, too, because stupid people can fuck up a whole argument if they don't understand it, right? Like, if they sure. I believe in the good... Case in point, the four people trying to argue with TJ right now. Stupid people really can fuck up an argument. Good argument or if they pretend to argue. understand uh, yeah, things that too. they don't. Like, um, um, but obviously the reverse extreme. If he, if, if, he was, if he was bringing up the Martin Bailey shit and I was just like, oh yeah, I follow. I know exactly it, what you're talking about. <laughs> in that universe, right? In that universe, oh yeah, I know all about that. If, say, for example, we had someone on YouTube who was doing that, we'd still have all of those people being able to take that video and then respond to it themselves, probably efficiently. And so the, there's still that fight going on. Meanwhile, I think the extreme of the other side would be the, oh yes, we've curtailed you know this, this, this. The, and now it's like, wait, did we just step on something that's actually true? And then it's just like, yeah, but it, it didn't, it, we didn't know it for sure at the time. And so it just, it just felt a bit off. Well, I mean, so that's why I, like you it. have to, if there's any uncertainty, there has to just be a default towards, uh, you know, free speech. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what the next question is, right? Like who decides that? I mean, hopefully it should be decided by more than one person. <laughs> I don't think what you want to put that, that, put that is... I don't think you want to put that in the hands of a person. And honestly, I, I feel like as, as much as possible that you should take human beings out of the process. I mean, but what, what happens? The problem it faces every time, though, right? That's like the end of the dialogue tree is the Ministry of Truth, basically. <laughs> Which is like, right. Well, no, the Ministry of Truth was a, an institution that was designed to propagate misinformation. This is an institution designed well, yeah. to curtail it completely. I'm, I'm more so. But that's not how power uh, works. Referencing it mockingly, like that's what right. we can. Well, end yeah, up I mean, like I've heard, the, I've heard this argument before. I mean, this yeah, is yeah. like the common argument that comes up when I put this position out there. So yeah. Yeah, and, and it's well, it's the reason. But, I mean, why. it's like well, it's just like well, you know, anything's going to be corrupted and blah 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 blah. I mean, like. Like it's it's tedious and tiresome to me because you know there's like one it just comes back around to this idea like why even have any institutions then if everything is just gonna true be if any power we give anyone with the best of intentions is gonna ultimately be corrupted then just give up on fucking well, but, life well this it, it, no, this is why this this you... don't give up in life commit yourself to perpetual resistance against domination. Commit yourself to having a spine, to resisting people ordering you about and imposing their life on yourself. Engage with the world openly and and cooperatively and fight like hell against people who wish to dominate you. Bam. That's how you do it. You don't give up. Do not die.
on improving anything. Give no, no, but that, that, wait, wait, that's my of, whole point. No, no, no. But we, we, we resort. Hold we on. The no, no. The, so yield you're your, just like you know, just yield. No, no. To, you're like, making. Oh, well, no, I'm, I give up. You know, we're not going whatever, to It's all just doomed to failure anyway. You're making inevitably collapse into the entropy of corruption. I think that's more your side than ours, though. But you're making. You're practically saying, let's give it to the Ministry of Truth. Fuck it. What else? We can't do any better. And we're saying, no. Fight for the ideas. Fight for them. Say, no, you're fucking wrong. This is the right idea. <laughs> and look, well, I'm, I'm in favor. I'm in favor of a government with some democratic elements in it. But there, but due to the fact that the history of the. <laughs> Why does it keep doing that? That people have trust in to act. And but this is exactly because for once. But, you know, there was a lot of things that happened around, you know, uh, COVID and the election and things of that nature. I think it me died and all the BLM protests took off. That you would try to right. do. Well, that's why there has to be, but you know, that's why there has to be an actual standard that's just beyond. Like it has to be as removed okay, as possible. Hold on, hold on. Challenge what, to the institutional logic that is. Put well, I mean, the, what what you're essentially like making the art. Things didn't change because of challenges in the institution. They changed because of new research. COVID. When you have I'll such move a, it off. I'll move it off. Yeah. But but you also acknowledge that science is is an evolving process. Sure. Official designated scientists. Like they're at her, but alternative, wait, those alternatives will be perceived of as a that, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean look, if they want to say like, hey, I think that this has potential as a drug if if it comes down to that, I mean I don't think every I think you could possibly censor Sorry, every single lie that happens. But like mm -hmm. if there's a lie that is uh deleterious to society demonstrably and it can be one hundred percent verifiably proven as a lie then yeah there should be some kind of crackdown on that yeah the the i mean the if, trouble sure, is where i don't know where if someone fucking if someone, fucking if someone fucking is only a horse drug what i'm talking about is the case the the edge cases COVID is a hoax is being example. sure or you know oh be it, careful though because what i mean that's a, that not like how come COVID's yeah, the only one we banning, should start doing that for i don't know the banning subjects, from right? the internet like the false getting closer like a, a charismatic right. sort so, of like no, what, no, what no, if no. what if you had somebody who thought like you know like something that's like damaging to our institutions and could go into problems like that uh let's say a candidate we'll call him bernie sanders but or further than i thought we good or if they it's really, really hard understand. it's really f hard to find your place in a conversation where most of the participants in the conversation are not making any sense at all like they're just going around in circles and uh, yeah that too that don't like um know. but obviously the reverse extreme if he, if, if he was if he was bringing up the martin bailey shit and i was just like oh yeah i follow i know exactly it, what you're talking that about could be. <laughs> in that universe right in that oh universe, yeah i know all about that if say for example we had it's like wait did we just step on something that's actually time and so it just it faults towards uh I don't think what you happens? Wanna, I don't think you want to put that. I don't think you want to put that in the hands of a person. And honestly, I, I feel like as as much as possible, that you should. Like the end of the dialogue tree is the Ministry of Truth, basically. Eight misinformation. This is an institution like that comes up when I. You know, anything's going to be corrupted, and are we give anyone with the best of intentions as good? Say and, no. Fight for the ideas. Fight for them. Say no. You're fucking wrong. This is the right idea. <laughs> and look, well, I'm, I'm in favor. I'm in favor of a government with some democratic elements in it. But there, but due to the fact that. The history of the world is authoritarian government after authoritarian government. I want built into the constitution or the document that founds that government blocks on the power that they can use. And that's not because I'm against any institutions or any progress going forward. It's just that I know that if you don't explicitly limit the government from doing this thing, then they will do it historically. No, actually, they do it anyway, because power is power. Uh, just because you wrote in a document that you can't do this, that has no effect, that literally no effect whatsoever on the material action, at the like material implementation of power. Uh, this happens fucking constantly. People break laws fucking all the time. And the people who make the laws are perpetually, they're the ones who made the law. They're the ones upholding it. They get to choose when they're going to enforce it or not. Do you know how many times in just American history, presidents um, have just completely ignored the constitution 
or have completely ignored a constitutional order? What about the Trail of Tears, for example, where Andrew where uh, Andrew Jackson, right? Andrew Jackson was just like, no, fuck the Supreme Court. I am going to make the military do this. And then the military did it and there was no repercussions. The these uh, it's just so stupid to think that like, oh, yeah, well, you know, the world is a the world is authoritarian. So, you know, I just want them to write down. You can't do it this way. Keep in mind, they say this as they're as they have made arguments that gender science is destroying uh, is like an imperial ideology. What? Wait. Well, that's why checks right. and balances have to be a part of any system that's proposed. Well, I think the broader systemic flaw, I guess, or problem I have with, with the argument you're lying out is that I mm. think ultimately free speech is the process or is the tool that can keep instit is the only thing maybe that can keep institutions from being to keep institutions on the path of being truth seeking organizations. Yeah. Well, Cause if you remove case, free worked. speech from that, <laughs> then they have true, no, it doesn't matter. true TJ. It hasn't worked because it's a fucking illusion. They can do whatever they want. I mean, who uses, we don't remove freedom of speech. How is you know, you have like certain curtailings of fucking aspects of speech, just like we already do. If yeah, but you're to, you're conflating. Few as possible, right? As few as possible. That's what yeah. we're supposed to. Anyone should be. Well, but you want it, as few it, as possible, and you don't want any. You obviously don't want anything that like you don't want to censor anybody's opinion. You don't mm -hmm. want to censor questions. You don't want to censor like this is a gray area of unsettled science or unsettled. <laughs> yes, exactly, Doe. Yeah, you hear that. FBI, if you don't stop cracking down on me and imprison me in this black site, I'll I'll talk about you on the internet. Checkmate, feds. Fucking fact. Like that there's is no being point. censored right now. That's kind of Ow. what the examples we were trying to go through were. Like, yeah, but you you're but I mean, you're you're also like, like you're you're pushing like a Marcuse intolerance thing, which you know your fellow travelers don't even respect tight. the scientific method or reason anyway. So like the idea that you would use this as a standard when I don't really care about fellow travel. I speak um, myself, Sean, are you so, trying deliberately really to change the subject as much as no, possible? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to change the subject. It I'm feels just saying, like you like, are you know, really like, bit. Like you're you're totally doing this is technically a what aboutism. What about it, you? No, guys no, it's are, not a it's not a what aboutism. I'm not saying what about this. I'm just saying that Well you're why, saying like, like they don't what, even what follow if you have people, We're missing precious seconds. Hey, TJ, genuine uh -huh. question. What's the significant difference between hyperbole and misinformation? Okay. These guys have anti chemistry. These fucking hosts cannot they okay. Lots of shows have hosts disagree with one another, but I've never seen a show in which all of the hosts are just tripping over each other constantly. They literally are just falling over each other. I I don't understand it. Why why do a four person show if you can't if you have no fucking chemistry? Um, hyperbole tends to be have an element of uh, facetiousness to it. I guess is that not very interpretable? Yeah. And therefore, in a in a world where misinformation is getting curtailed, a lot once of once again, you know, like always side, always err on the side of freedom, right? Well, so oh, when well, okay, but wait, you're <laughs> not though. That's the wait, thing. That's wait, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So yeah. I, you can, you can, I, I like that. Always err on the side of freedom. That's that's great. It just, this is not the position that you put forward in your video. No, like if 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 this the American Dream Show says Demon Mama, that's me position you put forward now with us was your video we wouldn't have never even well i'm just, it, I'm just I agree explaining with it a little deeper i mean i don't know it's it's like <laughs> you well but this is where I mean, the like, where there's there's the problem of like the superficiality of like hearing one statement that a person makes and then like oh i understand sure yeah response well, I mean, well, it wasn't you one statement, start to describe a, a lot of video. like tribal attributes to people like oh well they're part of this tribe so they probably believe this and this and this and this and then you have like this whole litany of no and thanks of, for coming of up. attributes that you've decided the person you mm -hmm. know exemplifies or something okay. even and though it's not necessarily the case tj and thanks I for think coming you, on to try doing a sean shut right the fuck up i think he's doing a mop and <laughs> bucket like honestly if i'm being honest the mop the is out and he's he's trying to make sure you don't attack his bucket he's okay. yeah the mop and okay. bucket like man the, the, the mop and bailey bucket. i like that the mop and bucket see there you go <laughs> i All like right. it too. no but i think let's this wrap this, this up kind of okay i'm getting tired of this oh <laughs> Oh, fucking Adam Xanax over here. Dude was sleepy from the beginning. Man, fucking wake up. 
Drink a monster, buddy. Pop open a Red Bull. Come on. Take a nap before the show next time. Or no, no, I, well, I just, are we gonna have like I'm a real not. conversation here? Are we all gonna talk. Where the fuck have you been? I've been? Yeah, I don't know what I, Adam. I don't know what fun. you're what the upset about, honestly. But what I was gonna well, say, I'm, I'm trying to drill on an actual argument here. Okay, so. I'm, I've stop, had stop, been stop, 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 stop. We're drilling in on we're drilling on something very important. Right? Yes, okay. right. which is that this is what Mahler brought up something about hyperbole versus like misinformation or disinformation, right. and it feels like, and this happens with a lot of content creators on YouTube is that in order to create like an artistic piece or order to sort of create something engaging, the message becomes so hyperbolic that it's basically not even, it doesn't even match whatever the original intention. I do not think that it's too hyperbolic to claim that conservatives don't give a shit about the lives of, of unborn children that they don't know and instead that they are more interested in imposing their religious worldview on women who disagree with them. I don't think that's hyperbolic. I think that is literally accurate. I don't even think, I think that they have, they failed to even, um, they failed to even characterize how it was hyperbolic, except for it to be like, oh, come on, there's probably some conservatives who don't think that. And when I, when I listen and I look, because I have like the transcript of, of the video, open when i look at the transcript of that and i look at what you're saying now you're so hyperbolic in your video that i i don't even see like there seems so world's difference of opinion that you're giving all right well, yes. maybe you can give me an example well okay so you're so first of all you lead the whole thing about saying that you know what this reminds me of this reminds me of the that vosh uh the vosh situation about the about the arming yourselves against republicans isn't this just like a rehash of that? Isn't this just like a rehash of the exact same thing where it's just like, I think you're being hyperbolic. And then, you know, the other person is like, I don't think I am. Here's the reasons why. And then they go, well, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. And it's like, okay. All right, then. Okay, uh, sure. You know, Republicans don't care or people on the right don't care about freedom of speech. They just want to say the N word. And you kind of go into this, I was naive to believe in free speech, uh, yeah. but now you're going to be, where is it? You're saying you're going to be, you know, ending up on the train to Auschwitz, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Because of... <laughs> so, okay, but do you see... I don't, where really, it, I don't really see the, where's the discrepancy? So if you're laying out an argument that, that says, you know, right wingers don't believe in free speech. They just want to be racist. And mm -hmm. I would correct. Right wingers do not believe in free speech. Um, especially right wingers who are religious. If they're religious right, they do not believe in free speech. If they tell you they believe in free speech, they are a fucking liar. Christianity does not support free speech. Christianity has a commandment against saying God's name in the wrong way. Are you fucking kidding me? I was naive to believe in the importance of free speech. And I, you said the idea, I was naive to believe that, you know, in a debate of ideas, the truth would prevail. Mm -hmm. And then you say, you know, you're going to end up on this train to Auschwitz, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, these are, these are very, these are much stronger claims for, we need to restrict speech other than this. Well, we need to well, I never, err on I, the side of caution well, and gray okay, areas. So, but when I said that a lot of people on the right just want to use the N word and this and that, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't using that as an example of the kind of speech that should be censored. I was using that as an example of the kind of free speech they actually prize, the kind of free speech that they actually want or care about. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I actually would not censor that because to me, that's an opinion. And, you know, I, I don't want to censor opinion. Um, so, you know, I, I think they should still have the right to talk whatever hateful shit they want to. But I, I was just pointing out that that seems to be the only instance in which they actually care about free speech. Yeah, but yeah, it is. It's the only instance in which right wingers actually give a shit about free speech. The rest of the time, they constantly push to silence others. Fucking. Do you guys remember how much the conservatives freaked out over uh, over um, um, the taking a knee on in the NFL? Do you guys remember how much the conservatives fucking freaked out how they wanted all those people fired and ruined because they took a knee during the national anthem? If, if we know what conservatives, but you're laying an about. argument that you think, and you're like, oh, I want to, I want to be Tim Poolish, 
but I think we're leading to the path of civil war and to Auschwitz. And well, if you're le- hmm? wait, wait, hold on. Tim Pool is an example of the fact that we probably are heading towards a civil war. Tim Pool has been hawking for it and advocating essentially for it. What he says, what Tim Pool says when he talks about that, he's not warning people. He's not warning people. He's telling them to go do it. He's saying there's no other option except for civil war with the way these gender freaks keep being themselves in public. That's what that's what Tim Pool does. That is when you respond to Tim Pool and you see that Tim Pool's videos get millions of views and that his views are are considered mainstream among his audience, among like the right wing, that his ideas are considered popular. And you go, wait a minute, this guy is advocating for the only solution being a civil war. And then your response is to go, guys, maybe we should keep the possibility that that right wingers are going to start a civil war on the table, that is a rational response. That is the the correct diagnosis. You're not repeating what Tim Pool is doing. You're pointing out that this guy with an enormous audience who 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 is supposed to, you know, who's kind of represented as like the middle of the road guy, that's what he sells himself as, and is really, really popular. One of the most popular shows in the world is constantly harping on about that. You're not being like him. You're pointing out what he's doing. I do believe that. Right, so, but, but, <laughs> But you're you're creating an art, you're crafting an argument where you're saying free speech is leading us down the path of the civil war in Auschwitz, so that uh, we need I to curtail this. Well, I, I don't know if it came across like that. Then I guess mm-hmm. that maybe I should have worded it better because I don't think that's what I intended to say. Okay, I think what well, I was just saying is mm-hmm. I think I was just like maybe just generally pissed at right wing ideology and was just talking about the ultimate expression of it and what it seems like people on the right actually want. I don't think that freedom of speech is what leads you there. I think that, you know, belief in right-wing ideology is what leads you there. Okay. Um, um, they, they, their brains are currently frying because they've been arguing against a straw man since the beginning. It's funny. They accused him of doing it, but they don't know how to respond to him t- t- just saying what he believes because they were expecting him to basically be like, yeah, right-wingers need to be put in the free speech jails. But... He never said that. Um, so I guess I maybe conflated a couple of different issues there, um, and maybe maybe I, maybe I should have worded it better. But I don't I don't think I was trying to make the case that freedom of speech directly causally leads to that outcome. Well, okay. Well, I guess I'll ask you what were you trying? I mean, the video is labeled free speech and death camps. So I right. well, like, what is the point? I guess of the video then it's not like free speech leads to death. Camps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That's how it comes across. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, anyway. uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, maybe it was clumsily done. I mean, like I've been doing this thing in July uh, where I've been trying to do a video every day mm-hmm. and like sometimes, you know, they, they might, there might be a little rush job here and there. Right, so maybe, right. maybe like some ideas were casually thrown together that were maybe, uh, maybe a causal link was implied more strongly than than I intended it to mm-hmm. be uh, because of the uh, nature of that uh, challenge mm-hmm. that I gave to myself. Um, so I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch and, and see like what, what I was saying, saying there. Uh, so and what like, was the what was your point in the video then? Um, I mean, my point was just I was just trying to wake people up to the fact that they have. Uh, an enemy that wants to do them harm. I mean, Tr- fucking true. I think. Oh, Good point man. and accurate. But- possibly not backfire at all, though. And what a, <laughs> that's got to be the justification for so many people. You would say need to be curtailed. Mm-hmm. So, so pointing out that someone wants to kill you is the same thing as that person trying to kill you. This is this this is the Darvo shit that conservatives always do. If somebody if if a conservative goes online and and says, "Yeah, you know, uh, I'm going to I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just gonna, I'm just going to log on and do some uh, casual Holocaust denial and, you know, advocate for more of that shit." And then you go, "That guy is advocating for the Holocaust. That's fucked up." Then they go, "You're just doing the same thing." It's such a stupid position. I don't know. I just I well, hate but wait, you, <laughs> you can you can wake people up to a perceived but I mean, enemy. Like, I mean, but like, I don't know. I mean, like, should I tell? I mean, I don't want to tell them that, like, hey, these right wingers are all a bunch of, but uh, you know, uh, cuddly, fluffy teddy teddy bears who don't mm-hmm. wish you ill will because I don't believe that. Good night, look, Sandra. Right. Like, Thanks for coming by. It was South. great to see you. I live you. in one of those conservative areas in the country. I hear what these people fucking say. I hear them fucking talk about shooting faggots, and we gotta fucking get the, you know. 
<laughs> N words back under slavery and all this shit. I've heard these motherfuckers say this shit. So mm -hmm. like, don't tell me what's what, motherfucker. Likewise, I know how these motherfuckers think. But that's not all conservatives, though. You yeah, what are you, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. That didn't refute shit. <laughs> like, wait. That didn't refute shit. I no. literally have been around <laughs> these people my entire. Wait, they just got they just got triggered by him saying, literally just saying, um, I've been around conservatives my whole life, and even to this day, a lot of them are really homophobic. And then they all just freaked out. I thought none of these guys were conservatives. I thought these guys were all centrists and shit. I thought these guys weren't political. Higher fucking life, dude. dude. dude like, this, what wait, dude, wait, 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 wait. Doesn't count Carver, for anything. Do you think your my argument bro? is there's nobody who's just an asshole or evil in the world? Do you, do you really think no, I'm, I'm, there's no I'm racist? talking about like the majority of the fucking right wingers that live down here, at least down south, mm -hmm. at least this particular variant. Like, if you fucking, if I was to go into a room full of like a bunch of Republicans around here, and I was just say like, man, things were better back in slavery days, you would not hear a peep against what I fucking said. I'm telling you that fucking straight up. Yeah, and there's that exists on every literal argument. It doesn't even, I'm not even talking about left and right. There's everywhere, all over the spectrum. You got the crazies. We sure. all know this. Well, well no, but, but that's not the crazies. That's saying that if you walk into a bar and you say something really crazy, they all agree with it. That's not the crazies. That's normalized here. That shit is fucking normalized. I'm telling, you the, I'm telling you the. I mean, it's not the crazy. See, you keep trying to reduce it down to this crazy by. fringe. It's not. It's the mainstream. It's what they all really fucking believe behind. Okay, I, I shouldn't have paused Andy there because he's and making the mask. It. He's making the it's same the argument. It's the fucking Bailey or the Mott or whatever the fuck he's, is what. See, he's <laughs> he's using this all Republicans, all conservatives are racist argument. It's that that's the stereotype. Which By the way, mask fucking... on, mask off is the correct thing, not Martin Bailey for this situation. Yeah, I mean, like, They're I don't think. So. Do I think every single Republican is racist? No, but do I think a lot of them are? Yes. Well, you're you're, you're acting you're acting in the world. Of them are, of you're course. acting mm -hmm. in the world as if they all are, and that's a stereotype. That's because here. yes, because the ones who aren't will go along with the ones who are. They've shown that many times and currently. Right. Wait, but if you if there is a also, fucking what party, to that, that, if there's a party that gives shelter and fucking well, the hyperbole is gone. That's racism. Then yeah, yeah but, you have to treat them all well, the same. But, but, but here's the issue. Wait, wait, it's like the it's like the scene in the Matrix where you know you have a. The thing about like, hey, these are the people we're trying to free, but until they are, they're your fucking enemy. Well, yeah, so, right. so are you being hyperbolic or not then? I mean, I think that there's an element of hyperbole. But what I also think there's an <laughs> no. What do no, 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 you do with that? Like, I how do I argue with a position that's yeah. simultaneously not and hyperbolic? I mean, well, can't something be slightly hyperbolic? Slightly hyperbolic. I guess yeah, so. Would it help you, Mahler, if you got like a specific percentage? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you saying there's not a gradient of exaggeration? Of course there is, but what am okay, I supposed well, to do with this? Okay, well then what's the fucking like, problem? The fact that you said Republicans are like, they're all going to want to do X, that I'm like, that's not true. And you're like, uh, plenty of them around me do. It's like, that well, yeah, being and, hyperbolic well, is that, wait, how is that, how is plenty of them around me do not a fucking argument to you? Because, because it's anecdotal? Because the whole world. Well, okay. Let me well, let about, me address well, this. States. This is why this isn't an argument. Okay, this is this was Tim Pool's argument for Trump was going to win a landslide in the elections because he drove around and he saw lots of Trump <laughs> signs where he lived. Okay, with right. the five like, people yeah. he talked. No, his argument is because he has to say that he's part of the of the hype machine or whatever. To whatever, yeah, you know, right? Exactly. Whatever. So they're all shifting. These guys Republican. are so stupid. Whatever. But also, like, I mean, how are you going to say that you're? It's not even. It's not even a personal experience. Like you're, you're depicting a caricature. The idea that all these people are like, "Whoa, we got to bring back slavery." Like, no, come on. I'm okay, so like, proud of you, Sean. You didn't change the topic. That's very good. I like that, <laughs> dude. I mean, like, come on. Like, quit, quit bullshitting. Who bro. wants to own a slave? Lots of people down south. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've yeah. talked to him. If, if you had to, if you had to ask somebody on a hundred degree day, what would make your day better? Air conditioner, <laughs> which wasn't around in slavery times, or owning a slave? Like you really With think a that fan. they would pick a slave? It can follow you the fan. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the. I mean, like obviously uh, now they would choose the air conditioner because slavery, slavery is not socially acceptable. But like. If it was, I don't know. But you you just said that you heard all these people talking. Yeah, about evidently it is socially better. acceptable. Like, so it is socially south, acceptable. Yeah. I mean, it's. I didn't say it was socially acceptable. Obviously, we don't have slavery down here anymore. I'm just saying that there's a lot of people who feel that uh, you know. Wait. So it was I'm a actually, it was a mistake. I, I mean, like you see, like this. You've heard like the South will rise. Like, what do you think that means? The South think, will rise again. What do you think? 
the all the Confederate flags flying around and all the defense of the statues and all this shit. What do you think that's about? I think it's just like, oh man, that's just our heritage. We just really like that statue because it's heritage. Okay, so out of curiosity, right? You think they would be a, just as defensive this, if it was a statue of Karl Marx? Like, well, that's history. Don't tear the Karl Marx statue down. That's history, y'all. Well, like, it's no. not our history. You know, you know, we talked about how you said it, it would be it's fine to have the opinion that, for example, COVID numbers are exaggerated. would be a fine if you think that as an opinion. If I was to have stated it as fact and I said my cite, my citation is that I have a family member in the hospitals that is uh, in on it. and is Obviously, is, is anecdote only goes so far. That's true. Well, I was just going to say, like, would would you want me to be silenced if I actually start arguing? I have a I have a covert family member who's in on it and knows about it, but they're trying to stop it from the inside sort of thing. I mean, I think I'd want to <laughs> I'd want to investigate. But if I said, like, there's no way to investigate because I don't want to get them in trouble. Um, I don't know. Then I guess, I guess it, whatever, it's, a zero, it's a zero sum thing at that point. Like, whatever. Well, the point I'm trying to get out, of course, is that there's a lot of ways we can argue uh, really broad and, and spicy positions right back down to something that's a bit more like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking hyperbolically about my experiences in my life, okay? And it's like, mm -hmm. right. But you can blow that right back up to something that's much more, um, let's say... I mean, that didn't sound like hyperbole. So you said you have direct knowledge of uh, COVID being a fraud well, because a family member said this or that or the other thing or directly is involved in a conspiracy. That's not, that's not hyperbole. Hyperbole is one of Hyperbole is one of several ways you can reduce it down. I wasn't using it in that example. I was just saying. Oh, okay, gotcha. Because you said like opinions should be okay, but stating things as fact shouldn't. But then if I said I'm stating it as a fact because of something that you can't disprove, what then? Well, then, you, I mean, like I said, you got to err on the side of freedom. Couldn't I justify everything that way, though? I, I'd be able to say anything at that point, right? Questions do, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you phrase, I mean, like if you're clever enough to phrase it a certain way, you could pretty much still get away with everything. Yes. No, no, no. But in terms of your, the, the, what you want to be laid out, you could still get away with everything. In terms of what you want to be laid out? In terms of what you wanted to lay out, in terms of like the Ministry of Truth, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, you still, I mean, you can still get away with a lot of stuff. You couldn't get away with everything. You couldn't get away, away with, uh, you know, unambiguous direct statements that such and such is factual when it's not. But yeah, I mean, if you wanted to be like, oh, I was just, you know, joking around or this or that, or you find some kind of cover for it. Yeah. There's always loopholes. Well, could you sure. get away with your statement about every all these Republicans want to bring back slavery? Yeah, I'm telling an I, anecdotal fucking. I'm giving an anecdotal example. Yeah, based but you're on extrapolating it out to a broader group. Yeah, totally. Sure. So wait, would that that would I mean, work like, wait, with wait, the like that's, races I mean, like, that's like, or? That's like, remember, remember, guys. Just a quick reminder: these guys who are concerned trolling about his about his hyperbole here are the guys who sit around talking about fucking TV being too woke and who are talking about how gender ideology is an imperial dogma that is choking out science. That's what those guys said in this conversation, but they are concerned trolling him about him saying that a lot of Republicans are racist. Just these guys are total frauds, just total frauds. Okay, LGBT community. So wait, if I like, if, if I had fucking kind of... if I if I'd scientifically documented it, like if I went around and like recorded, like how many people do I have to hear it from before, like it's a sample size? Like, well, that's what, exactly it. If you take like a poll and you got a poll of Republicans, but you can't do that they you can't bring get an back honest slavery. Poll, like it have to be it have to be something that was like more re revelatory. Because of course mm -hmm. anyone's asked like, are you racist? Neuralink. Like, no, of course not. If if it's assuming you could hypothetically okay. okay okay then yes you could say okay you conducted a poll you know but i'm asking like what kind of sample what kind of random a, sampling size would demonstrate poll that and there you, is you a can predilection towards racism in at least southern republicans no but you understand that your whatever your personal experience is mm -hmm. that's not indicative of the whole really why not all. why because not because that's not that's not how polling works that's not how statistics or populations function oh, wait but like what's well, big this is the deep pool wait. driving around and seeing trump signs so trump's gonna win argument but well he walked he, he drove around and saw trump signs and that was indicative of the fact that trump has a wide board base of support which he did now ba now saying that because of that he was going to win was a bridge too far but saying i see a lot of trump signs therefore trump has a lot of support that's not a fucking ridiculous statement at all it's just no. truth. aj is wiping the floor with these guys like I think there are a lot, there are decisions, there are points in this conversation where TJ could have driven the, could have driven it more, but 
literally these guys can't make anything stick and in the conversation they revealed that they're just total concerned trolls the fact that they're getting they're so mad at him about saying that a lot of republicans are racist and saying like republicans are fucking racist that that statement is what's irritating them when this guy down here during this conversation went on a rant about how he believes with no evidence no evidence presented he believes that science is being censored and choked out by imperial gender ideologues just it just reveals everything fuck okay good job TJ. so you're saying you did, you did you're good. going around and you're hearing all these republicans saying that they i mean i don't know i don't want to bring back the republicans i know that they're i know that they're or right wing people I know, I know people i know there are people who live in one of the yeah. reddest districts in america yes and i know that this area is predominantly Republican, but mm -hmm. I guess I don't know that every example I hear of a racist is a Republican. I'll grant you that every I, racist I you hear is Republican for the sake of the conversation. Okay. Well, I'm I'm saying I don't know that. I just what are they What are they that. saying though? Like they come up to you, and they say, "Oh, hey, TJ." Well, they don't come up to me. Of course, back. they're not coming up to me and saying shit. When you're, when you're at the Klan meeting and they're talking about bringing back <laughs> slavery, yeah, like, like how many you know, people are there? Yeah, lots of them. Lots of them. Tons. That's how I know. Right. No, but like, how, how did these conversations? This just, seem, this just seems like such disingenuous bullshit right now. Well, like, you're the this, because you're if the I was because if I was giving wait no if I was giving an anecdote to, that yeah, said you guys okay. about something you guys agreed with like this like oh man I was hanging around all these trannies and they were talking about how like they fucking we would totally not. deceive That's, the scientific no. institutions and so you'd be like oh yeah brother yeah dude yeah, anecdotal of evidence is like a meme thing people bring up all the time like don't give me an anecdote like we we've all been there they're like we wouldn't do that. Bro just literally did it five, like fucking 20 minutes ago. This motherfucker did it 20 minutes ago. Unprompted, an unforced error. We try to avoid using sure, anecdotes. And I, I mean, like I prefaced it as by saying it's anecdotal. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt if you okay. want. But do I'm all, just explaining do, to you what I have seen. I'm curious, yeah, there's a bunch anecdote. of Republicans in California. Do they all want to bring back slavery? Does it, does it differ from state to state? I don't know, I don't have enough state? experience with Republican fucking uh in california so i don't know right but you're willing to paint all those republicans in california as wanting to bring back slavery i don't, paint, I don't fucking think own. i painted them with shit well you kind of are i mean that's what you're saying how well you're saying most of them want to do this thing therefore i can make extra not even what he said they've now made up again fantasy world brains living in a fantasy he never even said that in the in the they said they even did they didn't even accuse him of saying that he's just saying like this is an experience i've had that there's a bunch of racists in his video that they were originally mad about he didn't say that all republicans are want slavery back he just said a whole bunch of republicans around him do they can't even keep the conversation straight it's so bad extrapolate that it's i can incompetent Make a judgment against most of them. I don't think yeah. I don't feel like I said anything like that. So I think that's a straw man. Well, you, you in your video you said that the only reason Republicans or conservatives care about freedom of speech is because they want to say the N word. How is that not all of them? That's hyperbole. Oh, that's the I mean, hyperbole I mean, like, part. Wait, see, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Do, do you guys not have any broad uh, brushes in your in your painting in yeah, your well, little paint box? Because I feel listen, like you probably do. Listen, this is the origin though of things like racism and bigotry and and all kinds of nasty things that we try to avoid we try to like we don't want to say that all you know gay people are this particular I way don't ever because it's the word not, all okay so well you you kind of did i mean your video was basically saying all the only reason republicans care about I'm going to say it. This is the most limp-wristed critique I've fucking ever heard. These guys are just like, oh, you said something that bothered us a little bit. We're we're going to harp on it for four fucking hours. Freedom of speech is because they want to use the N-word, which implies that they're racist. It does. Sure. I mean, how is that? So uh, is it is it? I would assume that there's probably, I mean, look, there's always exceptions to every fucking sort of generality. Mm-hmm. I don't think that every Republican is that way. So even, I think a lot of them even are. hold on, even now, you are yeah. characterizing the non-racist Republican as an exception. That's yeah. so bad. Well, it's fucking that true. I mean, so I'm sorry. Do you bad. want me to fucking sit here and lie to you? Oh, I missed it. What happened? I would also say that there's why wouldn't it activate an audience well enough to say there are people who think this way rather than painting the whole or the, the team that way? Why wouldn't you be? able to worry your people enough to be right. like we should act to prevent the bad ones from winning 
ones rather than just being like, I'll let them think it's all of them. Fuck it. Hyperbole. <laughs> um, I don't know. What, what is, what's the question? Basically, the one of the bigger arguments is like I can go broader. I can brush that way because it'll it's it's almost true in lots of different uh, aspects. Plus, I probably blah blah blah. When I'm saying like the overall goal to activate your audience, you could do that anyway with the examples of the awful individuals. You wouldn't need to paint the whole. I don't think there's game. any reason to be disingenuous with the audience, and to that's what we're arguing. Well, this, doing. this is the point. No, though, I, I, I don't I mean. see. This thing is like I feel like there is a mental block happening where you guys just refuse to accept that like this shit is way worse on one side than it is the other. I don't know if it's like a both sides ism thing. Oh, wait, no, it's, 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 it's not else. that. I'm just curious. What's the percentage since you're like not saying all, but you're saying in general. Yeah. Of, tell like, us. White people I mean, in the South just, that you've come across that are like possibly Republican. Because I don't I mean, obviously, I don't fucking have a. Oh, well, this well, is don't worry. What would be your percentage for the bring back slavery crowd? Yeah. Give us an idea. Bullpuck. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it, so preface no hyperbole. By, well, okay, I, no hyperbole. Prefacing this by saying that, like, this is my rough guess. Your gut intuition check, yes. My intuition. So take it as just that. Mm -hmm. uh, in the particular area that I'm in, the candid conversations that I've been subjected to. <sighs> I mean, it's kind of hard to say because, you know, I don't know what the areas that I go might be predominantly reflective of different demographics than like the overall demographics of the, the area. But I don't know. I'd say at least 10, 15 percent. Oh, my God. That's so Dude. horrible. <laughs> OK, OK. At least, you know, yeah, 85 percent of Republicans I mean, like, are racist. I'm sorry. Bruh, in my experience, absolutely true. absolutely fucking lutely true. And the ones who aren't go along with it all the goddamn time. That the actual the reality that I've experienced is like so troublesome, but <laughs> right. it is. It's, I don't know. It's just funny, honestly. But you're like, saying eighty five percent of you're saying eighty five percent denial, bro. Like, well, I'm you're saying you are li you're in denial. Look, if, you're literally listen, saying eighty five percent of the Republicans TJ, in the South if, are not racist. If, if you said if you said like listen mm -hmm. like. 10 15 percent no, no, based on my like, experience what comfortable with slavery not what aren't racist if you want to ask me how many are racist i'd say like 90. okay <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah. All right. if you get if you gave me like that solid 10 no, you, to 15 percent right. for your question you asked me you asked me what percentage would support slavery coming back so you're talking about like extreme racism but there's different <laughs> levels of racism hey. obviously. what's this Oh, um, would you mind reset? Yeah, that that's why I'm laughing. If you give me the 10 to 15 for like the the definite like hardcore racist, I'd be right. like, all right, you know what? That's that's your experience. But like, come on, like, wh why are we even talking about slavery right now? Like, it's it's so absurd. Like, why? it's, it's over. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it is over. That's true. Very good, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. True fact. By the way, there it is. All of this conversation was a stupid waste of everyone's time because there's the actual opinion. They believe that racism doesn't exist. I mean, he's, he's when he's right, he's right. Slavery is over. <laughs> well, no, it's not. Haven't you seen what's going on in these prisons? The Thirteenth Amendment didn't abolish slavery; it legalized it. That's right. <laughs> so, you guys want to wrap up? I mean, we've been going almost ten hours here. So, TJ, you've been super generous. Yep. All right. All right, everybody. That's it. We just watched. I had a fun time with that one. I don't know about y'all. That was really funny and refreshing. Nice to come back and remind myself how fucking stupid and brain dead and also incompetent conservatives are. And also, just it's just revealing, you know? Oh, actually, you know what? I want to see if, can we see what their side of the, of the conversation? Oh, is it over here? All right, here we go. Let's take a quick look. Oh, oops, here we go. 
50,000 views, 50,000 views, 1.3K likes. Ooh, that's a ratio. 50,000 views and only 1.3K likes on a giant fucking 11 hour live stream. Oof, bruh. But, um, holy shit. Um, yeah, so 50,000 people. Well, actually, this is completely... Okay, all we know is that 1.3 thousand people thought that Adam and Sitch did a good job on here, okay? That's what we know. 1,000 people are stupid and, and bland and tasteless enough to th have thought that they're, these guys did a good job. Damn. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, I've done some pretty long live streams. But, uh, I don't know, 11 hours of that shit, whew, makes me rethink. They stream for, yeah, they stream for half a day and only got 1,000 likes, bruh, that sucks. Yo, Crabe, good to see you, thank you. Uh, nothing of value was produced, TJ w wiped the floor with all of these fucking like, uh, uh, dullard idiots who can barely put together a sentence without tripping over one another's feet. Um, their stream looks like shit, their stream sounds like shit, and TJ was genuinely the only enjoyable part about it. Um, except for, I guess, seeing a bunch of conservatives, uh, trip over their own words and sound like total morons. Oh God, this is the satisfying thing. The one satisfying thing about having to be locked in struggle with the worst people on the planet is that you get the joy of knowing that you can fucking style on them. Not TJ, not TJ styled on them with drip. He styled on them with presentation and he also rhetorically styled on them. What a good feeling. That's like, uh, I don't know, it's like it's like getting in like a dog fight, you know, in like your like biplane, and then you do a loop and take out three enemy fighters. That's what the equivalent is. Fucking. Hmm. Curious. Yeah, it's funny because they I think they felt like they were like trying to stick him to a position, but they just sounded incredibly petty. At the very beginning, he said, yeah, I was probably a little bit hyperbolic, but I think a lot of Republicans are racist. And I think that a lot of them stand by for racism. And they were like, what? What? How can you say that Republicans are racist? The party that is currently trying to overturn fucking interracial marriage. How can you say those guys are racists? Oh my God. What the fuck? Oh, fuck! That's all they got. All that conservatives have is violence and impotent, uh, fucking impotent in indignation. That's it. That's all they got. 